What's going on, everyone? Welcome to episode 57, Menace and the Man. Mm-hmm. Stay on the Man, Dennis the Menace Bermudez. That's not what it looks like. That's not oh. what it looks like. What was that, G Fuel? Yeah. Mm. Uh, what, what, we got episode 57? Episode 57. Okay, okay. Um, We're so- supposed to have Chris Wade here with us, but... yeah. No, nah, he had he had some uh, babysitting issues. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. Prior obligations? Yep. Oh, that'll do. It, it was too. kind of like, you know, maybe I could make it, but uh, probably next week, maybe. That's always an issue when you have kids, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes and no. Well, I mean, you know, when you're in a a split home, if you will, you know, and you only have your daughter or your son half the time. You know, the time that you that you get with them, you want to spend with them. Yeah. You know? And at the same time, you don't. <laughs> it's like, this kid's, like, annoying me. Leave yeah. me alone. But, like, when he's gone, you're like, where is that little fucker? Oh, 100%. You know, I miss him. I'm sure. Yeah. You have FOMO sometimes when you don't have your kids? What's up? You have some FOMO sometimes? Um, when yeah. When you don't have your kids, you're like, yeah. oh, man, I miss these little yeah. fuckers. Yeah. You know what? Hang on. Like, so this past weekend, I had an amazing weekend with them, and they left on Sunday. It's like, this is going to sound insane, but, like, I almost hate having, like, a sick weekend with them because when they leave, it, like, breaks my heart even more. Like, we don't do anything, like, you know, out of the ordinary. We're just, like, hanging out, just, you know, playing, you know, some video games and playing with our action figures whatever and watch a movie, whatever, at the house. It's nothing, but if we go to, like, a trampoline park and, like, you know, I don't know. When we go and do, like, really cool things together, and I see them, like, smile more than than regular, and then they leave, I'm like, ah. Where are you guys going? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that's never easy. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's many other reasons why I don't have kids, but that's one of the reasons why I never wanted kids, because I thought, like, man, what if I break up with this girl? <laughs> and then she's a bitch. Like you're lucky you got your baby moms is cool. Don't I don't have a baby mama. What do my you kid's have? mom. You got a baby mama. No, I no. call my 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 children's mom. I have more respect for her and respect for myself. I feel like baby mom is very like Well, that's cuz it rhymes with baby mama drama I, and you don't want to Well, I have none of that. Yeah, you have no All drama. my everything I do is organized and there's taps on everything. Yeah, you got a good situation yeah. going on there. Yep. But then I've seen other people not being ideal. Yeah, you would if you had a kid with a woman and it didn't work out, you would be fucked. Because <laughs> you are, a, a, you know, you're a dickhead. Like I'm sure you're like as you're going out the door, like yeah, well A B C and D, and the A B and C and D were the worst things you could say to her because you're trying to like, kill, like hurt her soul. Me, I'm like hey. Like, I yeah, still want to be well, friends I, with you. I'm like a Sour Patch kid, like we've said I still want to be friends with you. Like, what do you need? Was there anything I could do for you except for, like, be with me? Where or I'll be versa? like, bong, bong, bong. But wait, I still want to be friends with you. Then she's like, nah, you said some fucked up shit. Oh, yeah, no. Even if, like, a girl's leaving me, I'm like, hey, whatever you need. But then part of that is, like, we've talked about this. Like, I don't realize when I say fucked up shit sometimes because... I don't know what fucked up shit is. Like, it's hard to hurt my feelings type deal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's not many things that you could say that I would take offense to and be like, oh, man, that fucked me up. Like, that hurt my feelings. There's nothing, really. You can say whatever you want about me. And I'm like, oh, all right. It's your opinion. Yeah. Unless you say you're going to kick my ass. And then I'm like, you're not going to kick my fucking ass. <laughs> that hurts you. Yeah, that's the only time. Uh. But even that, I was having a talk with uh, Johnson my crazy drunk friend. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about that, like how people always start with me. Like I had a few instances. What, this past weekend? No, I had instances this weekend. Can you talk about your weekend that you just told me? Oof, had a great weekend. I mean, I guess I can go into it a little bit. Just had a successful weekend, I guess you could say. Why? Uh, Just, you know, closing. Can you give me... The the Marianne Rivera of Mary Carol's. Just making some some moves with some ladies. (laughs) You know, I don't uh, like we were speaking about before we went on air. This whole no nut November thing. I'm not into no nut November That's at all. Insane. I well, the thing is, that's some crazy shit all together. Right. It is very crazy, but it requires a ton of discipline. Yeah, 
Like, you become a fucking Buddhist or a priest if you're going to go No Nut November. Like, even for a month. Well, no, I mean, hang not... on. Buddhists don't have sex for, like, years. Yeah, neither do priests never have sex, I thought. That's that's a malarkey. Uh, with little boys. Well, hang on. It depends on the church. But... Yeah, but you're going to tell me, like, a priest doesn't J.O.? I don't know. I feel like we're... I don't want to go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just... Bro, even that one funny thing I saw... Uh, We'll go back to No Not November and how pathetic that is that people, some beta males out there brought up that fucking thing. But uh, John Jones and Adesanya were getting at each other. And so Adesanya was like, I find inspiration from Dragon Ball Z. Like I watch anime and Dragon Ball Z and that's what gets me fucking motivated. So John Jones was like, oh, this little fucking twerp, like you find inspiration from this. And then someone, I think it was like a page, like as shopped as it gets or some meme page was like, so you're going to tell me. This guy's a fucking weirdo because he finds motivation from a cartoon and you always find your motivation from an imaginary guy in the sky. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I'm not going to say I'm not religious, but I'm not religious. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not. I don't know. I've never been touched by an angel or been proven that there's Jesus. Well, but- here's where because I'm an anthropology major and anthropology majors and fucking religion groups have religious groups have beef. Yeah, they have wars because, you know, uh, people, anthropologists are like, well, this is actual proof of, like, that dinosaurs were here. So you can't tell me that <laughs> this is fake because it's made up of atoms and it's, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's so many layers underneath the ground, which is, you know, an element of time. And this is, you know, I don't know exactly what it looked like, but I'm telling you. This this thing lived here like, at yeah, one point. I'm not going to shit on anyone's religion, but it's a weird, slippery slope to get into. But but for me, things that can't be answered by science, yeah, I go, there's a higher being. All right. So you would say you do believe in God? Yeah. I'm on the fence. I've never been proven right or wrong yet. Right. But I've never also, like, I went to religion and whatnot. I was raised Catholic, but I also, like, had moments where... I've tried to talk to God. I never got an answer. So I'm like, all right, maybe he doesn't exist. But even still, I'll talk to him sometimes. I, I don't know. It's a weird. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't know. Yeah. It's a I weird tell you thing. what, before I'd fight, I get religious. Like, hey, you, I remember you told me <laughs> you that. said this. Or, you know, whatever is going to happen. Obviously, according to you, it already happened. So let's see. what. I happens. remember you said you're not very religious one time. But then you're like, before I fight, super religious. Like you turn into a fuck. Well, I don't go to church every Sunday. I go to church like if. A you know, nephew or cousins getting communion or married or dies. There's probably people out there right now like that boy needs Jesus. Yeah. Talking about me, I do. Oh, oh both yeah, of us, yeah, 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 you do. Yeah, but you know, it's fucking one of those things. But I, I just thought that was a funny little anecdote to add to that. That someone said John Jones is gonna get mad because this dude gets inspiration from anime and Dragon Ball Z, but then you know. Like, I've always said this. We've said this before on the show. Like, Vitor Belfort knocked fucking Bisping's eye crooked and, like, fucked up his face. And then he went, Jesus. Oh, that, that, did that. you ever see that clip uh, from Chael Sonnen about, like, if he had any inclement that Jesus Christ was giving power for someone to get in a fist fight? Yeah. Like, that's how. Man. That's pretty much where I got my thought on that is, like, there's no way that if. God does exist. There's no way God is coming in on fight night and helping you, taking time from all these people that have cancer, all these people that are going through real shit to come to you and touch you fight night so that way you fucking hospitalize or give this other guy a concussion. And well, v- Vitor Belfort after every fight would be like, Jesus. Oh, you know who would be great to talk to? is Johnny Bedford and my buddy uh, Dustin Pegg are very religious, and I live with them in the house, and... I would essentially do like Bible study with them every night just because and I would ask them questions like why this why that da, 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 and they would answer it to the best of their ability but what they the they I mean the reason why they say they're fighting is they bring glory to God kind of like an advertisement like you know like yo you want me to represent your short like your company mm-hmm Good. You got to spot my shorts. Like, that's what they are for, for Jesus, I guess. And even a That funny was my thing, take on it, at I, least. I'm pretty sure this is what he said. Like, Bisping one time said that when he was fighting Belfort, and it wound up not going well for him, but he said to him, like, at the weigh-ins, like, Jesus doesn't exist. You know, like, said some shit like that to him. 
And then Belfort, oh, wow. like, Belfort went from, like, stone face grilling you to, like, I'm going to kill you fucking face. Wow. And then right after he yeah. dislocated Bisping's eye and made his eye a dead eye, he was like. And even that, like, that's always one of those things. Like, it doesn't make me cringe, but it kind of makes me like, uh. No, I, I really should be. I, I, I should be more religious, I think. I think it's a good example for my kids and everything that's in the Bible from what I'm told is, uh, you know, good things. Yeah, I guess do I, unto others as you want done to you. Yes. I believe like that. some of that's like common sense though. You know, like the golden rule. Yeah. So, I mean, so what? Like if it's good common sense stuff, I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Again, not shit in our religion to each their own. Just saying. Wow. It's not for everybody. Little. We went on a little tan. We started with No Nut November. And then we went to John Jones versus Israel Adesanya. Yeah. But back to No Nut November, have you had a a No Nut type of month, Menace? No way. Yeah, no chance. I, I don't I love a No Nut week. I've never had a No Nut month in my life, I don't think. Have you ever had a No Nut week? <sighs> Actually, I think like since seventh grade, eighth grade, maybe I had one or two. I don't know. I feel like the second I learned what my dick does, <laughs> I was like, yo, I'm fucking with this. I'm yeah. into this. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't feel like I've ever had a no nut since like eighth grade. Uh, yikes. Seventh grade, whenever it was that I realized what my dick did. Week. Never had a week, yeah. <laughs> like one of my favorite scenes is, um, what's that movie? Uh, with Leo DiCaprio, The Wolf of Wall Street. Yes. When he's like, how many times are you embarrassed him? He's like, I don't know, once, twice. Those are rookie numbers. You got to pump those numbers up. <laughs> And he says, like, I masturbate. You can't be yeah, like, stressed I out at the, three on times the, on a day. the phone. Yeah. You got to get those numbers up. Rookie numbers. But we'll go into Joey Beltran in a minute. See, here we have a couple of really big fights coming up that just got booked. You see, they finally might do Khabib versus Tony Ferguson again. Khabib versus Tony Ferguson. So they've tried to book this fight four times. Oh, I thought that got... I thought that was already... No, not official yet. So I saw Ali Abdelaziz post that um, Khabib had signed his part of the contract, but I think they're just waiting for Tony Ferguson to sign his part of the contract. I don't see Tony being a guy like, I'm not fighting him unless I get X amount of dollars. Uh, I don't know. He's in a weird fucking place. I, I, don't, I agree with you there. I don't think he's going to be about the money, but he's just, he's crazy. And he's already the champ. In his head, you know, like he was probably similar to, I mean, Kobe does it as a joke, but like Kobe always says, like, you know, this is my second title defense coming up against Kamara Usman. Like Tony Ferguson won an interim title and then never got to unify it. Yeah. Because Connor came back. So. Yeah. Which is kind of fucked up. Yeah. That's why you have it. Because that means you're next in line. And then he blew his knee out. So he was going to have that title fight and then he blew his knee out. Tripping over wire. Do you watch his Instagram? Of course. He does some insane things. I've told you. I tried to get him on the show, and he was like, listen, Hermano, which is brother in Spanish. I know. He was like, uh, if I said no to Joe Rogan, I got to say no to you. And I was like, why don't you do Joe Rogan and do us? Like, what What are you doing? <laughs> you know, do both. I was like, and I said to him, like, do, do an hour or two with Joe Rogan and give us 15 minutes. And he was like, uh. And then he did, like, a week later, he did like a pre-taped after Khabib fought, I think, Poirier. He did like a pre-taped interview with Helwani. He's a, he's a hard man to get, apparently. Huh. Even when I talk to the people at, well, I think he switched management companies. But when I used to talk to the people at Paradigm about him, they would say like, hey, man, he, he's a tough one. He, he like beats to his own drum. We try to get him interviews all the time, and he like refused to do media. What like in my head. Why is he so liked? What is it about Tony Ferguson that's so liked? For me, I like his fighting style. He doesn't take a back step. He just steps on the gas. He can get rocked, drop, and roll and keep going. Okay. I'm just, I'm playing devil's advocate like I do that too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like you. I'm a man. I know. Fan. Yeah. But I'm just trying to... Is he better looking than, like, I'm just, because he's got, like. Uh, he's definitely not better looking. Does he have, like, a million followers? He has a million followers. Maybe more. He's got a lot. But I think. Uh, I'm, again, I'm trying to. We spoke about it before. Once you're a champion or you get to that level, you get, like. 
Oh, yeah. You just get that bump. He did have the interim title. Yeah. He had the interim title. I don't know if him and Kevin Lee was a main event or a co-main event, but he had the interim title. And then the fact that Khabib's – so Connor's the biggest numbers guy in MMA. You know what? Khabib's I'm going to sec- backtrack a little bit. He does do crazy shit in his fights. Yes. But even Khabib is the second biggest numbers guy in MMA. So he's been linked to almost fighting Khabib a few times. So that uh, that rub off a little bit. You know what I mean? My buddy uh, Dan Valmont said he would come on. But we have Beltran now. My BMX buddy. And talking about his fucking pro uh, motocross son. And then my buddy Dan. So we'll see if Dan wants to do like 815 yeah, yeah. or something. And we'll brush through with him quick. So another couple of fights that were booked real quick. Anthony Pettis is apparently moving back down to lightweight. So I guess now his Gre- Gregor Gillespie call out doesn't look as bad. But he's not fighting Gregor. He's fighting Diego Ferreira. Who's that? Um, I don't know. Some Brazilian dude. Oh, um, the homie Gilbert was has been calling out Anthony Pettis hard. Hard. Well, he said Gilbert calls everyone out. Everyone. Gilbert was trying to just fight Mickey Gall because Carlos Condit got hurt. He was like, I'll take the fight. Gilbert will fight anyone. He calls everyone out. Everyone. That's awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. He he was trying to fight Ben Askren, and then he was trying to fight Pettis. Oh, that's right. And then he posted, so Ben Askren's retiring. I guess I'm not getting that fight. Pettis is moving down to 155. Like, what? I can't get a fight. Like, he's trying to fight anybody. And he's in the top 15 now, so he's due for that type of fight. But also, he's a tough fight. Like, I wouldn't... If I'm in the top 15, I'm not trying to fight Gilbert Burns. And he's active as fuck. Active as if fuck. If he's not training for a fight, he's training jiu-jitsu and competing jiu-jitsu. And we've talked about it before. Obviously, Dan Hooker's really good. He beat Ally Quinta and whatnot. But I think Dan Hooker just caught Gilbert. Like, that's the one fight you can look at where it's like, oh, no, he got knocked out by Dan Hooker. But it's like, all right, Dan Hooker's good. And Dan right. Hooker caught him. You know, that's what happens in fighting when you're both at the highest level. You can get caught sometimes. So Paige Van Zant finally booked a fight. Who's she fighting? Amanda Rebus, the girl who just beat Mackenzie Dern. Oh, that but that young that young girl was calling out Macy Paige Bar- hard. Macy yeah, Barber Macy. said that Macy Barber's fighting Roxanne Modafferi, I think. But uh, Macy Barber said Paige don't want that smoke. Paige got offered the fight like two or three times, I believe. Yeah, that's what Macy said, right? Yeah, that's crazy to me. Yeah. I get it though. It she talked shit and then she said on like uh, another show page that what's her name Macy Barber like tried to slide into her husband's DMs about like a diet or some shit, but still like I guess that's taboo or forbidden. So why wouldn't you fight her? I don't know. It's that little... would get. I'd be like, yep, contract now. You talking to my girl? I want to fight you. Yeah, pretty much. No, my man. Are oh, you putting in like if you were actually a fighter? I'm saying you, if someone, you're saying. Oh, yeah, man. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you were putting on your woman's hat there. I'm saying no. Well, no, I'm, I was talking in terms of, I was Paige Van Zandt. Yeah. Okay. You ninny. I'm just checking, just checking. And then um, your boy Andre Feely's got a fight booked. Sodif Youssef. And even to, back to Khabib, Tony, they're going to be at the Barclays in February. I mean, uh, April is what it seems like. No official word yet, but. And then February 8th. So one thing we were also talking about, it seems like Conor McGregor's negotiations didn't go well because they were going to do, he was going to be a pay-per-view. Now he's not going to be a pay-per-view. And they don't even have anything announced for that date yet. Well, there's no chance he's fighting if he's not a pay-per-view, right? I guess. I mean, if they're smart, they put him on ESPN and do huge numbers, but I think they need to do pay-per-view because they need to generate the money to pay him. Right. Because he commands such a big salary. But uh, they were going to do January 18th, and now that was going to be UFC 246. But now they just announced UFC 246 is going to be Caitlin versus Valentina, and the main event's going to be our boy Dominic Reyes versus John Jones. Johnny Jones. Which is a very interesting one. Yeah. I mean, that could be a night where, I mean, obviously John Jones is like the fucking goat, if you will. Natural or unnatural. Whatever. Don't talk about whatever's in it. How much money... Or what do the odds have to be for you throw a hundred on Dom? Honestly, or 
Even. You're throwing I would, 100 on I, Dom. I'd put money on Dom in that fight. 100. At some point. At, at even numbers? At some point, there has to be someone that comes along and beats the guy. Right. No matter who it is. And <clears throat> it's not like we've seen Dom beat. Because what I'm saying, well, I mean, me personally, what I'm saying is, like, I hope the numbers are skewed crazy. Mm-hmm. Like an 18 to 1. I'm fucking, I'm hitting Dom. Bang. I don't know about that. I'll probably be like 3 to 1. But I the, still the, love yeah, the. Yeah, I still they, love they, that. They, he will be an underdog in that fight. I mean, obviously, what my the question is how much. But yes, he'll be a very live underdog in that fight because he's undefeated. He hasn't lost yet. So I remember one time I talked to you about fighting. You, and uh, you said when you watch when you're about to fight a guy, you don't watch their wins. You watch their losses. Right. And figure out like how they lost those fights and how, and that's like the playbook on how to beat them. Right. Like you don't have that playbook on either one of them yet. Right. Like people could say the Volk. Well, o- I mean, you could watch the closest fight and. Yeah. Like you could watch Volk and Ozdemir versus Dominic Reyes. But like people give like people even whenever we've had Dom on the show, people comment like, yo, he's not undefeated. He lost to Vulcan. That fight was super close. I went back and watched that fight. But ready for this? Vulcan got assassinated by John. Um, no, he got assassinated by DC. He didn't fight John. Oh. But that's also a stylistic matchup. Oh, that's right. You know what I mean? Like, styles make fights type of deal. Yes. And, like, I, like, A, B, B doesn't always mean you're going to beat C. Yes. And even him versus Vulcan was three rounds. Who knows what would happen in a five-round fight? Like, it was two to one somebody after three rounds – Dom could have won. I mean, like like the Usman, Kobe, Covington, like, triangle. Yeah. Like, there's guy, the one guy that beat Kobe. Usman beat the one guy that beat Usman, right? Yep. Kobe beat. Yeah. Your boy, uh, Randy Brown, just submitted the guy who beat Kobe. You saw that with the triangle? We got to hit him up and get him back on the oh, show as yeah, well. Yeah, we do. See if we can get we last time we talked to him we talked about getting him in studio with um Dre. Yeah. Now would be a pretty good time. Yeah. Maybe like in the next two weeks. Yep. And so I just got an alert on my phone that okay. Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury are gonna fight again February twenty second. Mm. So that should be a good one. Did you watch the Fights this weekend, the boxing fight. Oh, you don't really watch boxing like that. No. Well, it was um, Deontay Wilder beat Luis Ortiz. Do you even know who Luis Ortiz is? He's the guy that got smoked by Wilder. He's got he was pushing forward, pushing forward. Wilder took like a step back and just threw the right down the middle. Yeah. But he's also the guy. I forget. Was it Joshua? I forget who Luis Ortiz fought and put up a really good fight. Let me just check this real quick. I don't know. It was Wilder. So he fought Wilder once back in the day, but he lost to Wilder twice now. That's always tough when you lose to somebody twice because it's like, where do you go from there? Kind of like Jose Aldo. All right. So let's call the executioner and see what's going on in his life. He actually hit me up like he wanted to come back on the show because he enjoyed us so much. Well, I mean, we bring something to the table, Stan. This is true. This is true. I mean, like if we was an equation of you plus me, it'd probably be like, uh, I don't know, 75 menace plus 25 Stan to equal menace and the man, would you say? Repeat that. I don't know what the fuck you just said. I said if we... If the equation for we, we being menace and the man, mm-hmm. the equation would probably be like 75% menace plus 25% man to equal we. We being what he enjoyed. And now when I'm hitting him up, ooh, it's saying Jose Beltran. He's not Jose Beltran. Dude, did some random dude hit you up? No. Well, On the ho- interwebs? Ho- Jose means Joey, right? I don't what does Jose mean in Spanish? Come on. Anybody. You're Puerto Rican. I'm a <laughs> fake one. I don't think anybody knows. What's the address here again? Oh, shit. Can you just... Oh, what? Who do you got coming? Uh, 
113 Adler Street. Don't say that. No, what do you mean? G Fuel. Yeah. That's not like giving out a phone number. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, mobs of people, if anything, they're going to come here and buy G Fuel. Yeah, way outside for us. Yeah, <laughs> if you want to fight, come to 113 Adler Street. Oh, dude! Yo, oh my God, if I can find this, it's amazing. Can you go to the interwebs and show this? What do you have? So, remember the chick that came on, uh, Rebecca Starr? Yeah. The dude she used to date. Fuck, let me find this. It's it's gold. What does he have? Uh, fuck, I gotta find it. Oh. Can you pull this up on... Like, so people can see this? Um, possibly. If you send it to me on Instagram. And the thing is, I want your organic. It's old now, though. It's old. It's like a few weeks old now. And you know what? Like, I don't know if it's like funny and stupid or if it's badass. Like, I don't know if I'm laughing at him and, like, you're an idiot. This is ridiculous. Or if it's like, dude, you are one of the most malicious motherfuckers I've ever come across. All right. Well, let me see. Let me see. Can you put it up on the... Hmm. Well, I'm not sure how I get to my messages on here. What? Go into your profile, nigga. I'm into my profile. You gotta like approve the. You're not logged in. Are you? Uh, I was logged in. Nah, that ain't you, dude. Should I give you the rundown of it and then you can hear the real the real thing? Yeah. Or you want total surprise? Um, I like both. Like I said, I like to watch movies. I like to read about movies before I watch them. I do know him. He's crazy. Yes. Yeah, like how do you look at your messages on the internet on Instagram? Press that little camera up in the upper left hand corner. No. This is wild. It is wild. It's gotta be. Like it's easy in your phone. I know. No. Maybe if you're navigating on what you're doing and like putting it on the for people to see, they can help you find what you gotta do. Um, I don't know what that means. What you just said. Like they might be able to give us direction. Go over your, go click your little human there. All right. Why don't you just show it to me on your phone at this point? Well, I mean, it doesn't help the the viewers. Or where is it? Oh, let me see on my phone actually. And then we got to get the Joy Bell track. Yeah. It's not letting me find Do her. Do you know his King? King underscore Eric Bloodax. All right, so how long ago? Um, oh, I got it. This yes, one right here? yes. Can you display it so people can see it too? Hiya. So I wanted to address something real quick. I'm over here in the UK. Fight all over the world. There's some people, some fans, some not. All right, let me get it up there. there we go. I don't. Hiya. So I wanted to address something real quick. I'm over here in the UK fight all over the world there's some people some fans some non-fans just some people with big mouths in england the uk saying they're gonna fuck me up when i come here stab me up whatever all right so check it out i'm staying at one the limes <laughs> See that? this is my place that i'm staying at and it's on daisy road in birmingham and i train at fitness factory so if you got an issue you can come down here and meet some shit you don't want to meet motherfucker straight like that um the door's unlocked and i'm room one there's people, I guess, in this Airbnb up on the second floor, but I'm room number one, so you just got to come down here, come right in or <laughs> knock, and you meet some shit you don't want to de- meet and get fucking dealt with. Catch fucking issue. All that inbox, all that fucking talking on my posts, nah, 
be about it. I'm in, I'm in England now. I'm all alone. You come down here and meet some shit you don't want to meet. Hiya. Yeah. So I, I wanted to address something real quick. That's I'm over like here in the UK. Fight all over the world. There's some people, some fans, some non-fans, just come some on, people. Stan. Big- well, no, that's amazing. It, it's both entertaining to me and funny. At the same time, like, I don't know. It's kind of badass, too. No, that kid's a badass. I've known that kid for a minute. He fought in the New York Fight Exchange a few times. Like, uh, he's one of those kids. He doesn't give a fuck. I remember at, uh, when I I had did a kickboxing fight in, like, 2011 or 2010, and he tried to fight Keith Trimble. Oh, no, that didn't go good for him. No, I mean, nothing happened, but, like, he tried uh, to— it, it got dealt with later down the road. But he started. He started talking shit to Keith Trimble, and then Volante like stepped to him, and well, like. No. And then he came into the gym, and Volante like almost finished him via leg kicks. Well, no, like did, like. Oh, and because of this instance. I mean, I don't know. Hang on, had to have been. Yeah. Because why would he, after getting killed, be like, "Yeah, fuck you." Da-da-da-da. Yeah, him and Volante had words the one time, and I was like, oh, shit. But then even I've seen him at numerous instances. Like, he's, uh, he don't give a fuck. Yeah, I've seen him. He's been at the NYFE and gotten into a few little scraps and, like, words with people and whatnot. I think he's a character. I find that funny that he just gave out his address and shit like that. Like, here's my, yeah, here's but my... I, mean, I mean, of his following, I would say 95% of it has to be U.S., like, I'm going to say 90% of it's New York. Yeah. Well, no, he's saying that people obviously follow him that are talking shit to him. Because he must be getting DMs or something of people talking shit. Mm. You want to hear some shit? Yep. I'm at, I'm at school at work. And they're all like, uh, oh, can you go let to, oh, let me. Yeah, you go do that. Yeah. Rob Labiento, what's going on, my man? Can you set him up, dude? Yeah, we're gonna have to. Yeah, he's a he's a night owl, anyways. A little intermission. Um. Or actually, why don't you go into a little bit about Dennis the Nude Insert? Oh, you you do that. Can, can you make sure that the, I'm a real DB? <laughs> Did you? Did something happen to my? I can't hear myself in the headset. Maybe a wire got tangled. Oh. My new coach today is fucking nuts. We're good. Who is this? Oh, I can hear myself again. Rich, Rich gave him some of his Make it a little louder. Oh, it's like you, this kid will like you. He's like, all right. What do you mean this kid will like you? Like he'll, he's into like working it's out. It's got uh, three hundred milligrams of uh, caffeine in it. That uh, whereas these ones just have, I think, like 150. Huh? Why? That's a lot. Well, no, me and you drank one on the show one night. I drink them all the time, actually, when I drive to Connecticut. Yeah, me too. I'll be drinking one tonight, actually, when I drive to Connecticut. Wow, you're going to Connecticut right now. Yep. You're going tonight, Connecticut tonight for what? Uh, my mom Dukes is in Connecticut. I'm gonna. Pick her up, bring her home for uh, Thanksgiving. I'm a good son. I thought you already picked her up. She goes back all the time. Yeah. So, Dece- so December 13th, Menace. Menace Bermuda's Day. Rob Labianta, you going to come out? Yeah, yeah he's hype about it. You're actually the integral part. Hang on, so ready for you're this? You're the integral part in what's making it happen. Yeah. No, um... Yeah, hundred uh, percent. What? Why is he? Because we wouldn't know Rich Schaefer if it wasn't for Rob. Oh, this is very true. 
It's very true. Um. No, I'm conceited, so it was my idea. <laughs> I was like, you know what? <laughs> Nothing's been about me for a while. So my birthday's coming up, which is actually happens to be Dennis Burrito's day. I don't feel like my birthday is the good reason to have a celebration and a charity, but I feel like Dennis Bermuda's day is. Yeah. When you did something? Yeah. When you were somebody? Yeah, when I was somebody. Used to be somebody. I thought he was still somebody. I know, I know. He's, he's always trying to bring me down, dude. All right, we'll hop in here, Rob. We'll see if this headset works for you. No, you gotta have a headset. Ooh, actually, bring me that microphone in here too. Yeah. No, that one. Yep. Yep. We have all things that are good. You do. You gotta, we gotta plug that one in though. Yeah, I'm gonna plug it in. Give me one second. There he is, Hoop. There he is. Oh, I should. Oh, I'm a juicy hand. Mm -hmm. You could hear it. Like shameless plug. No, he's he's not. He's got. Oh, okay. I can hear you. Roger. Get a little mic up for him. Well, we're at we're at G Fuel headquarters, so why yeah, wouldn't there be G Fuel headquarters? I didn't, know, I didn't realize you were coming in. Oh. Can you? Uh, you should probably shorten it. No, we're gonna. Or well, no, that looks good. I guess. Yeah, there it is. Okay. There you go. Something like that. How many cameras are on you guys these days? Well, we have <laughs> angles. We like to go angles. One, two, three, uh, right now, you got menace cam going on. Yep. Uh, we'll call it the menace and Rob cam. I like it. I just realized your your uh, your uh, show name was Dennis and the Man Show. I thought it was Dennis and the Man. Like it's Menace and the Man. Yes, me me sorry, Menace and the Man. Yeah, you silly no. goose. is it Menace and the Man or is it Menace and the Man Show? Menace and the Man Show. Thank you. Yeah. Right. So so I think so. so but you're like the you're just like the regular man. You're like the yep. you're like ah. Yep. I didn't know that. Well, that's like we, I came up with it because okay. my nickname is Stan the Man. Yes, yes, yes. And he's Dennis the Menace. Right. So we were like, oh, let's just call it Menace and the Man. Is, is Stan is, – is, is, is Handsome Rob's mic working? Um, is it? I don't know. I mean – Nope. Second. Now Jeez. it is. Now there it oh, is. Oh, there it is. Because oh, I was like, I better. hear him, <laughs> but I don't hear him through the headset, I feel. Look at the big brain on Menace. Yep. Mm. Not the man. Nope, not me. Yeah. <laughs> Hectic as fuck in here. So, uh, I talked to Rich Schaefer today. He wants to come on the show. Ooh. What, are you guys going to talk about politics? I'll talk to Rich about politics. I mean, I feel, I, I, feel like, I feel like Rich might get in here and like let us have it. I would talk to Rich about politics, 100%. I could talk to him about some shit. You should get him yeah. when he's um, up for re-election. That would be... You're pretty good. Well, we don't want to no try. We don't want to. Like you don't want to. No? We don't want to hurt. Maybe uh, I want him no. to. I want him to like, bro. That's what wanna, I was gonna say. You don't want him to lose. No, no, no I point. want him to like talk shit a little bit. You know, uh, I want him to be, okay, you know. Gotcha. There is no chance he would lose an election. It just doesn't no, happen. No, no. He wins in landslides unless he goes on the Menace in the Man show. Unless he <laughs> goes on Menace in the Man show. <laughs> like you said, this we have video of it. <laughs> well, see you later. Yeah. But even like he's the guy now going to be responsible for giving Dennis Dennis Bermuda's day and making the Menace Bermuda's bar crawl. But like mm. Rob Labiento is the guy who was instrumental in bringing him into all of our lives, the yeah, Long sure. Island MMA yeah. community. I'm sorry, Rich. Because you used to train him uh, <laughs> at the other gym. Yeah, used to... the original place. And no, no, yeah. no, sorry, Rich. <laughs> Very happy to have him. <laughs> yeah, I remember no, I'm apologizing for Rich. Oh yeah, you guys. Even the old gym. I remember I trained with Rich for like two, three yeah, years, yeah, and yeah. I didn't realize who he was. It's like my first client. I thought he was some Everything nice older, out. older gentleman. Yeah. And no. then one day people were like, "Good luck this week. Not that you need it, but good luck." And I'm like, "Why the I'm fuck? Like, he's got a fight." Yeah, I was like, why is everyone wishing you good luck? You're doing like a fucking a charity boxing event? And he's like, no, I'm the Babylon Town Supervisor. I'm up for re-election. <laughs> and then I had like, End, yeah. I grew up on Long Island and in Lindenhurst, Babylon. So I started having flashes of all the signs that say Rich Schaefer mm. that are everywhere. <laughs> yeah. And I went, you're that Rich Schaefer. And he went, yeah. Connections. And I was like, oh, my God, you're the you're the highest ranking like Democrat. In Babylon. In Long Island almost. Well, he really is. Yeah, he's like the. To town, he's the Suffolk County Democratic chairman, too. Yeah, crazy. Like, I remember John Podesta like calling him, 
who's like one of the, who was like Hillary Clinton's like aide. You know what I mean? He's a ver- very high ranking Democrat. <laughs> Getting into politics these days. Well, I mean, I it's know the man show yeah, gets into we, politics. Oh uh, well. I'm political. Can man. I refer to it as the man show or no? Yeah, no. Get sued by that's a, yeah, no, oh. that's that's what we want to go. Oh, with. okay. Yeah. All right. I thought they already did that though. Like Stan wants to do like a lot of man shit. He wants I to like have the, he wants I to like have that concept. He wants it. to like have so like the menace and the man show want to like start promoting our own shows, whether it's you know jujitsu, kickboxing, MMA, oh, whatever. Okay. And like Stan wants to have like ring girls come in here okay. and audition for like on the show for your own fight club. Yes. Yep. Team union. Even to be our like G Fuel tenders. I like to it. Service. I'm gonna, I'm gonna crack G-Fuel. open this new G Fuel in a can. Do it. Let us know what you think. Mm. I saw the. Is that the new van outside too? Yep. Yeah. So here, give us an, a, a great, uh, Looks good. A, all natural, good. opinionated taste test right now. Tastes like blue ice. It's pretty good. It I think t- you guys gave me the right flavor. I'm yeah. sorry, sour cherry is delicious too. You're I, saying I like I like that one the best. I think is the blue raz. So I'm gonna be up. The all night. also the, the sherbet is very good mm-hmm. too. Is this gonna give me energy? to Take care of my child. Yes. My eight month old. Oh, 100 percent. Ah, sick. All right. That's yeah. Gonna be yeah. Feel these then. If if little Rob's yeah. up when you get home, mm-hmm. you could you could tell Julia to go to sleep. Got it. Good. All right. I'll take it from here, babe. Got it. Nice. I got okay. G fuel running through nice. my veins. I'm ready for it. How All old right. your kid now? Eight and a half months. Yeah. So give him a little dab of G fuel. Yeah. You guys will be doing. He'll be doing That's his first push up. Terrible idea. Kids <laughs> At what sleep. age are you like okay? Uh, what twenty four months after twenty four months you're like my kid's two and, two and two yeah. no I'm gonna say one he's like one ah, I guess you're right because you gotta do 12, 13 months what a weird age thirteen months is jeez thirteen months you can't say like a, he's a little over a year old I mean I always did what did you do what do you do right now two They're four and six oh it's easy yeah yeah almost no one. but like I would I w- you know what I wouldn't say I wouldn't say my kid's eighteen months no. I wouldn't do it. I would be like, he, you know, he's one and a half. I like one and a half. I'm going with one and a half and two. Or 18 months if, you know. Uh, anything over if one If you're years. shopping for him, he's 18 months. I'm not taking, I'm not, no, it's. That's what I think it is for. Clothes? Shopping reasons. Clothes? Like, how old's your kid? Yeah, he's, uh. He's a little over a year. He's a little over 18 Man, months. Enough. So you're like, I, I don't know if it's for shopping reasons or just to tell how old the person is, how old the kid is. Yeah, but you got to do math when you're. Figuring out well, you wouldn't say is. one and a half. I'm still trying to remember. Why his, not? His birthday is hard not to remember. I don't know. Right 18 months paints a, a better picture for you than one and a half, Stan? Same. No. I get, I'm just Same saying. That I get, all right. I see what you're saying now. I didn't get what you were saying. It's hard first. enough to remember when they're born. But like if someone gets you a gift, if you're like, yo, my kid's. One and a half. You know, he's 19 months. So here, yeah, I don't want to leave Joey Beltran hanging. Let's right, get a few minutes months. with Joey Beltran. Yeah. I'd be amazed. Amazed if what? If it was some fan who like sent. If this was just a random fan? Yeah. Am I allowed to text message while I'm on the show? Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, right, just don't JL. I don't know. Do that. Unless you want to. That's up to you. Do you guys get in trouble for that? I mean, we're on Facebook these days. <laughs> yeah. Joey. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Yo! The bare What's going on, Joey? Boxing champ. My guy, can you hear me? What's up? Can you hear us? Can you see us? Yeah. If you go long ways, you can get all of us. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> yeah, you know what? You know what I mean. Turn the camera, and you'll get all three of us. I got all three of you. Oh, oh all right, all right. Joey Beltran, welcome back to Menace and the Man. What's up, bro? What up, man? Oh, man? Nice to meet you. How are you? This is our Dennis's old strength coach, one of my old coaches nah, he's as still well. My strength coach, still, yeah. When Dennis makes his comeback, yeah. Wow, whoa, easy. Is that a real thing? A real thing? Yeah. Saying? So my old strength coach, Rob yeah. Labiento. What's going on, sir? Nice to meet you. Hello. Hey. And now we're joined by Joey Beltran, the bare knuckle fighting heavyweight champion. Yes, sir. What's the mindset going into a bare knuckle fight? Is it different than an MMA fight or a boxing fight? Yeah, absolutely. It's a fucking street fight. I see myself. I consider myself the world street fighting champion. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah. 
But yeah, at first, the, something me and Dennis were saying. Dennis is Puerto Rican, but he's not like a real Puerto Rican. He's yeah. just Puerto Rican and like I'm a fake Puerto Rican. Is that because yeah. you didn't speak Spanish? So, just my dad's 100 yeah. percent Puerto Rican. And he banged my mom. Jose is Joey in Spanish, right? Yeah. Okay, we just needed to land that plane because we didn't think, we didn't realize that. So do you go by? Yeah, yeah. Do you go? Do you, your family calls you Jose? Uh, no, no one really. I've always been Joey. My grandpa was was Jose, and then my uncle was Uncle Joey also, and then I'm Joey also. Okay. So pretty much not to call you, you know, get you confused with your grandfather is why you took Joey. Because I remember there's. This I mean, no, I mean that's just what my mom called me. She's calling me little Joey, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, and I just got your text, 7.30 Cali time. No, I apologize. Ah. Uh, Why? Were you, what were you in the middle of? Are you training right now? Are you still teaching? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm teaching class. Oh, we called you in the middle of teaching class? Well, I teach in clients, but it's all good. I'll all right. just shift them over in 10 minutes. All right. All right. I we'll like your it. style. We'll take it. We'll I like take your it. style. No, because in second grade, there was a kid. His name was DJ LaRue. Or his name, his name was Dennis LaRue. And I was Dennis Bermuda, so he switched his name to DJ because of me. Really? Yeah. Was he nervous of you? Well. Were you cooler than him? Duh. DJ's pretty cool, though. I guess. I don't All know. right. All right. Okay. All right. So, again, congrats on the recent win. So, you consider yourself the street fighting champion. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That's, that's what I can tell myself. But, I mean, honestly, I do. I'm super stoked. Um, hold on just one second. No, it's just five minutes. I'll be right Tell my lady. I like that. Yeah, she's cool. Oh my goodness! And your girl fought on the last card as well, right? Oh yeah. Oh, uh, but that's... I did a good. I did a good, really good job of handling that. I mean, my my um, that was definitely something that I went over with with uh, with my mental coach as far as preparation and dealing with that and everything. Like, um, you know, just like. I kind of knew that that was obviously it's a fight, it's a possibility. Like there's a good, there's a fifty fifty chance that she would lose or win, and if she lost, I would have to deal with it the same way as if, if she won and everybody was happy. Like if she lost, like fuck it, I still have to go out there and fight some big six foot six guy, six foot five, two hundred sixty pound dude. Like fuck it. The mental go sensei. Again. Still working with Caleb, yeah. right? Absolutely, man. Yes, Caleb's a gem in the sport. One of the good guys. Hell yeah. Menace worked with him a little bit for his last fight. Yeah. He's awesome. He's got some yeah, good man. stuff. So now, oh, yeah. going forward, you don't want to fight on the same card as your lady. Never. Yeah. I, could, I can't see that, that was being a unique a good experience. I mean, you're talking about, like, just being at home. First of all, somebody who had to cut weight, and then me, I'm a heavyweight. So it's just, like, two different diet plans. Like, just two different ways of, of, of her way of training, like, or the workload that she can be under because she's like a 120 pound girl as opposed to like my big heavyweight ass. Like <laughs> I'm like, I'm good. Like two sessions, hour, hour, 30 minutes each. I'm good. Like I'm 38, almost 38 years old, man. I, I don't need to kill myself in the gym anymore. Like I used to, like, I just think back. This is really I just stupid, man. I just overkill a lot. Overkill. Yeah, and a lot yeah. of times, that's just from the old school, like, wrestling mentality that is kind of grandfathered into MMA, you know? Like, yep. more, 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 do more, do more, do more. Now, I'm like, fuck, dude. Just, just a little bit of, like, just, just some mitts and some fucking cardio, and I'm straight. Some <laughs> barn, some cardio, and I'm straight. That's it. Yeah. I, sometimes I would really dumb it down, you know, where, like, Yo, if I didn't do any training for this fight at all and I just took care of my cardio, I still know how to fucking fight. I'm still fucking that guy up across the cage from me. Like, that's it. Boop. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, like, at this point, it's like, for me, it's just, I just, cardio, 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 cardio. Cardio is king, man. And I, I really, I think I really showed that in my fight. When people gas out, that's the only part of the fight you have any control over. So when Absolutely. people gas out, I'm like, you are so, like, <laughs> dumb. <laughs> like, that's the only aspect of the fight you have any control over. Anything can happen. Fucking, you can slip on a banana peel. But, like, you can control your cardio. So do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
man, I was fucking murdering myself from sprints and fucking stairs, that aerodyne, aerodyne bike, man. And I just like, I just wanted to make sure because I had that as a game plan, like going into the fight. Like I, I felt like I could just drown him. I could take yeah. that big ass for fucking the deep water and drown him. Yeah, that's a great feeling knowing that you could take someone there and you're going to be fine. You're going to be swimming all day. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Was that the game plan coming to the fight, though? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. I'm a little bit like, there's some things that I wanted to do, like as far as like when I planned everything out and did all my work with, uh, ahead of time with, you know, with, with my mental coach, as far as like mapping out the fight, how I wanted it to go. Like, you know, there's some things that I didn't do. Like, I really didn't win the beginning of the round. Like, I won the big moments. Like, yeah. every round, oh, the crowd went, oh, like, I did something that stood out in the, the judges' eyes, and then I felt like I finished strong and won the end. Yeah. But, like, I kind of, like, gave away, like, the first 20 seconds of every round. For, I don't know why, but that's just something that we'll address going forward. Yeah, for sure. I forget who I talked to, but they told me, at least for MMA, you know, if you win the first minute of every round and the last minute of every round, that's only two minutes of a five-minute round. If you win those... Two minutes, you you will definitely win the round. Start yeah. Strong. The, the, the judges are human beings, so they remember the first and the last. Yeah, and big moments. Yeah. So what have we got so, next for you, Joey? I don't know, man. I mean, like, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, there is, I, I, that was the last fight on my contract, so we have to go through that whole song and dance as far as re-signing me. Um, paying me champ money and, uh, you know, and, you know, I really do think that if I get active as far as like, I've never really been proactive as far as like social media or like yeah. pumping myself up. I'm always been just like a, a hard hat. Like I put on my hard hat and I go to work, but I get like, dude, like, no, I gotta, I gotta prove value to these, to these people. Right. And, and, and gotta get my name out there and, and do some, do some hustling and bustling. So. I've already been proactive with that, done a little uh, commentating gig for, a, for an amateur show out here, and that was cool. That was fun. And uh, talking to my boy, Sean Wheelock, we can hopefully expand that in some other things, like through the, you know, through Fight.TV and just pro wrestling, stuff like yeah. that, just really trying to get expand my expand my brand. Your brand, yeah. Um, as, as far as, like, I used to hate when people would say, oh, it's good for my brand i'm like just shut the fuck up yeah, just fucking yeah fight. fuck off yeah. but i mean but i mean it is what it is man it's like we gotta do it i'm gonna we throw gotta something it. out there i'm gonna throw out an idea for you for your brand you could fucking let it sit in the wall or you'd be like "Ooh, i like this your brand should just be like you and your wife like i don't know like you pranking her and doing shit like that like fighting with her. Oh, i dude. don't know like that that i think that's what people want to see that's what I thought about, dude. Like doing a, like a YouTube channel, like how funny, like almost kind of like a uh, Tom Segura and Christina P, like like the your mom's pod, your mom's house podcast. Yeah, we love that. We love that shit. Yeah, so like something, something. But then like we actually fucking fight, so it would be kind of cool. Oh, 100%. <laughs> no, babe, look, look at the last episode. You said this. This is actually the proof of what you said and where you were wrong. Okay, do you see that? And yeah. then video you doing that to that. <laughs> and also the bare knuckle fighting championships. You're like we talked to Johnny Bedford about it. You're like the guy that they should be getting behind. Yeah, we had Johnny on last week. Like you come to fight. There's no like point fighting. There's no coming in like not in shape. There's no fucking coming in to play games. You're coming in to take a motherfucker's head off. Yeah, you know, and I I I would hope that they would uh, get behind me. And like I said, we'll wait and see. I kind of know how. They, they work, they kind of go radio silent for a few weeks after the fight, and I'm used to that now, and then I'll just let my manager do his thing, and I have confidence that we'll make some things happen. Um, I would like to get it get right away into it, but I know that they don't like to have me fight consecutive shows, so that means that February is off the, call, off the table. Well, so, Johnny said they're doing 11 shows this year. Yeah, show. yeah, yeah. So you so got it options. Goes, starts February and it goes every month after that. So you got options. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's gonna be a busy year. And now I you saw know, you. You know, say like, 
yeah, I mean, they've, they've kept I fought three times for them last year, so it was good. And now I saw you had the two championships. You won, like, the that other championship, right? Not just the- Yeah, so that's, like, the historical – like the historical recognition, the historical society, if you will, the police, the police gazette world diamond heavyweight title. So yeah. that's like, as far as like the title's lineage, lineage goes back to like 1889 or 1839. Wow. Or something silly like that. 1839. Back to John L. Sullivan, who actually won it in 75 rounds in Mississippi. Yeah, like, that's some real the, shit. That's like the history yeah. belt. Yeah. Yo, the, like, so, the, like, yo, yo, the bad motherfucker belt really should have been as many rounds as it takes, bare knuckle, but MMA rules. Yeah. Yeah. And not New York. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Like we were talking to Johnny Bedford about that when we had him on last week. Like, bare knuckle fighting championships is not coming to New York anytime soon. Nah. We're, yeah. we're just not ready for Maybe it. Maybe 2027. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Joey Bell trying to be the commentator by then for the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championships. I know, man. Shit. All right, so we don't want to keep you too long. You're doing some privates right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, go get know. that money, dog. Where? At the UFC oh, yeah. gyms? Yeah, at UFC gym in Oceanside. Yeah, so you've been back there. I remember last time we had you on, you were like on the outs a little bit with them or whatnot. Like you weren't there at the moment. Well, I wasn't there at the moment, yeah. And then I came back like... I made him here like a month and a half now, and everything's going great, man. I love it. So where are you, where, where are you at, California? Yeah, Oceanside. All right, so if someone wants a private lesson with Joey Beltran, how do they get in contact with you? They can just show up to the UFC gym in Oceanside, California, or you can hit me up on Instagram. Boom. 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 <laughs> Executioner, right? That's it. Uh, it's Joey Bel- Joey. Beltron underscore MMA. Okay. All right, Joey. Sorry for the miscommunication in time. Let's do this again in like a week or two. We'll get you and Ben. Hell yeah, brother. Sounds good. No, I want him and his wife on, dude. Ooh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Oh, I'll talk to her. All right. So let's set it up right before the holidays. Let's get right before Christmas. Okay, brother. All right. Thank you. You're the man, Joey. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, man. Nice to meet you. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah, we've, like, totally ignored Rob there. We didn't introduce him or anything. That's okay. Or, or did just, we? I'll introduce we, myself. We did to Don't Joey. We were like, yo, this is Dennis's yeah. Yeah, strength coach. It's no big deal. Uriah hit me back. What'd he say? Trying to get him on. What's up, brother? I said no. Say, so you got 15. Rich is listening to you guys? Is where we go? Rich who? Schaefer's on. He's on the line. Should we, should we call him up? No. no. no, no, we're, no. We're, I want Rich in person. Yeah. Okay. The funniest thing is, as I was talking to people with the Dennis Bermudez bar crawl, they were like, is Rich Schaefer coming? Yeah, he's going to do it. He, he, he's a risk. He said he'll make an appearance? Yeah. yeah he's he, thought, then, he's he thought he was starting at like 10. No. I told him like 8, 8.30. He was like, oh, yeah, I could definitely. Yeah. Hang on, no, he was prepared to come at 10. Yeah. And I was going to say to him when I was going to reach out to him, I'm going to say, like, listen, come in like you're a politician. You're going to come in, shake a few hands, kiss a few babies, take a few photos, and leave. I hope no one brings a baby. Nah, but you know what I mean. He's coming in just to shake Rob, a hand. Rob, you should bring little Rob. Should I bring my son? Yeah. 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 Are you still at the, the beer uh, club? No, not anymore. It was no. fun. Yeah. Oh, your wife it. got that for you as a gift, yeah, right? We hey, we don't drink anymore. She's sober these days. Really? Yeah, what am I going to do? Yeah. You should baby. bring little Rob, and he could be the baby that Rich Schaefer kisses. I like it. Right. And then Wow. And then, like, oh, all right, babe, go on. Sort of creepy. No. So, her, so let's send her home with this kid. After. Like, make her bring the baby. Bring the baby. Rich kisses it. I want Rich to do a a, a, a cut. I want him like a ceremonial. Oh yeah, yeah. I told Rich he needs to do a ceremonial. He wants a, a ribbon, cut ribbon, cut ribbon cutting for Dennis. Oh my god, that'd be amazing. Um, oh. And we're gonna do Dennis Bermuda's faces on a stick. Really? Yeah. Like yeah. you ever see that movie? I mean, I'm not gonna do it, but you ever see that movie with Jack Galifianakis it. and Will Ferrell? Yeah, and don't say these things. Like, I'll put I, the think, idea I think out there. I'm, I'm an I idea think as far as your ideas go, like. We'll I make good it ideas, an, but an ugly gonna... sweater theme. Oh, ugly sweater theme. That's yeah. what I said. We'll I think the, the face theme. is a really good the idea. The face is great, too. but who's going to do that? Who's going to do what? Get the maid? Get the maid. I'll get the maid. Oh, there you go, Stan. I'll get a maid. Yeah, I can get those I'm maids. an ideas guy. I just don't follow through. <laughs> You're like, I'm an ideas guy. I thrive yeah. on enthusiasm. I will throw don't take out the wind a, out of and I'll throw out a ton of stuff. I can think about ideas. I just don't actually like to to do it. Oh, that's the way to be, though. All you like, need is the yeah. idea and then a little bit of execution. That's it. All right. And then to know Rich but Schaefer, shit could happen. That's pretty much what I'm just like, Rich, can you get this done? 
Bro, like, I, I think the oh, ceremony so, cut. No, so you have to call Rich tomorrow and really get things rolling. Well, even when we leave here, yes. or I'm going to come up with the list tonight as I'm driving, and then I'm going to message it to you first and tomorrow, and we'll just okay that list. Because everyone I've talked to, they said they just want to know when we're going to stop there. You know what right. I mean? Like, I'm not too familiar with the bar call. I don't know how long each stop is, an hour, two hours, whatever. Uh, well, know. in my head, if, One hour. If, the, if the crawl starts at 830, the day ends, the day actually ends at midnight. Yeah. That's so let's it? say, well, I mean, actual Desperados Day, December oh, right. 13th is till midnight. So it's over. Yeah. Well, now, so I, I think we do four bars. eight. Yeah, we'll do four bars. One hour per bar. Okay. That's the move. I think that'll be the easiest as well. You're starting at Lily Flanagan's, right? That's where Rich is going to meet you guys. Cut the rope. I so guess, yeah. We haven't figured. That's oh, what I'm saying. We have to come up with the list and figure I, out where we're going to start Lily where we're going to go. Flanagan's and work your way into town. Yep. Yeah. All right. Town of Babylon. Well, vil- no, maybe the Villager. Okay. I'd rather start at Lily's. Uh, I think Lily's. Yeah, no, no. Lily's is a later is vibe, bigger, I right? think. All right. Lily's is bigger. Yeah. You guys got to end at Mary Carroll's, though, right? <laughs> As soon as Plug Scary Mary's. Whew. I haven't been there in <laughs> Stan's favorite forever. spot. He's actually Stan's going there after Stan's this. Stan's right? actually an assassin there. Yeah. Yeah. And the funniest thing is like we gotta get Raleigh in studio. Oh like, yeah. <clears throat> I almost have like personal security there. So like people- <laughs> So the security guard there, like I went with Stan a few times and like he's like, Oh hey, what's up, Des McKay? What's up, man? Like I don't know him. I, I like kinda get to know him. Mm-hmm. And then on this one particular night, like he's like, "Hey, what's up, this? Hey, what's up, man?" And then Stan's like, "We have a show together." And Stan just does not leave this guy's side. Just stands. Wait, wait. Stan, you go stand next to the security. No, guard. like yep. stands with me. Yeah. yeah. So I'm out mingling around the bar. Stan right. is just shooting the shit with this guy Raleigh. Okay. For fucking, I don't know, maybe three hours. Now, <laughs> when Stan walks in there, it's just like, this one dude. Started shit with Stan, and Stan, I don't know if he was in the wrong or what. Like, no questions asked. Just grab this dude. I'm like Norm from oh, Cheers I when it. I walk in. They're like, Stan. Yeah. Like, this guy, like, uh, like yo, hey, Stan, whoever he's with, like, six shots on me. Well, oh. even, so, a kid, shit like that. a girl asked me. She was like, hold on, I'm going to ask him. And she was like, you, Rancher Blue Cheese. And I'm there with Rob Scotty this night. <laughs> She's like, ranch or blue cheese? And I'm like, oh, ranch all day. I don't fuck with blue cheese. Like, I'm not a fan of it. And then she goes, really? And then she goes to the kid. She's like, he just said ranch. And then they ask me again. I'm like, yeah, I don't trust people. Jokingly, I say I don't trust people who eat blue cheese. And I just see this kid, like, snap on his face. And he's like, why the fuck would you say that? Starts talking shit to me. I see him, like, size me up. My grandfather invented blue cheese. Yeah, he, like, sizes me up, and he's, like, trying to fight me. And I'm like, bro, just leave me alone. Like, go back to your girl. He's like, she's not my girl. And I'm like, oh, so you're trying to pick her up? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, just go back to trying to pick her up. Just leave me alone. And then the kid just keeps talking shit to me. He's like, are me and you going to have a problem? So I'm like, right, bro. I tried to talk him off the ledge ten times. And then I'm like, what would you do growing up? And then the kid (laughs) bit that question. That's his line. I've only said it, like, three or four times. What it's did he still do? Your line. He, kids like, uh, why are you asking that? I mean, I played sports with my friends, like video games. Like, wh- why? What does it matter? And I was like, well, I grew up boxing, doing jujitsu, wrestling, kickboxing. I'm like, this isn't gonna go well if you really want to go outside. Got it. And then the kids like, did you just threaten me? And I'm like, I kind of yes. did. Yeah, I kind of yeah. did indirectly. Like, I'm telling you to stop, and you won't fucking stop. Get out of my face. So then the kid keeps going and going. Then the one security guard walks up. Right. And he's like, calm down, guys. Calm down, guys. I'm, like, I'm calm as can be. It's this fucking kid. He's very yeah, animated. Yeah, just ask him what he does. Yeah, he's telling me to go outside. I'm, can I take him outside? So then as this one bouncer is trying to defuse it, the guy, Raleigh, just walks up, sees this kid giving lip to me yep. and the security guard, hip, hip, grabs him, hip, to- hip tosses him, slams him on the ground, <laughs> like knee on the face, <laughs> looks up at me and is like, you good, kid? I'm like, yeah, I was, I was yeah. good. I was going to go outside with this kid. And they just drag him out. They use his head to open the door. Nice. <laughs> Throw him on the curb, and the yeah. kid starts like rolling on the ground, like my knee, my head. Oh. So also, you know how like bouncers like get a lot of girls. Sure. He also uh. sees a lot of girls, and he sees their like what they do, whatever. So Stan will just sit there, and they'll just, this guy will play both. Like yo, that girl right there, you could probably get her. Like I know, like yep. yo, so and so, get over here. She'll come over. Why? Like this is my friend Stan. Why don't you just bounce at Mary Carroll's? 
He's cause... not big enough. I, I could definitely be. I'm, be I'm definitely big yeah, enough. There's people smaller than me. Well, he likes to. Dr you can't drink. Right, okay. Yeah. Right, 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 that would. Right, right. I like. That would be his. He <laughs> like stands stands at the fucking interview t <laughs> the interview table. Like, all right. So I like to drink. Totally down to work with you guys and like make sure your place is safe. But I need at least a twelve pack of. Well, I always joke <laughs> whenever I see the guy Connor who owns the place. I always joke with him. I'm like undercover security. I always tell him I'm undercover security, and then I tell him like whenever you. Like, mm. <laughs> you know, you know what's funny is like whenever I go into like a bar or a club, whatever, and like uh, like oh yo, Desmond, what's up? I'm like hey, what's up, man? And like if you know, and they buy, if they buy me a drink, and when I see them later, like yo, if shit goes down, let me know. I'll get in. There. I'll get wild. Oh, yeah. Especially if I'm drunk. One drink, yeah. yeah right. Hang on. If you buy me one drink and you're a bouncer. Oh, okay. And like, you're like, right. yeah. So if shit's going down and the bouncer gets into a fight, you'll step in. I mean, that's probably wow. not. Okay. All right. Definitely not. Hang on. Definitely not. Hang on. <laughs> the <laughs> bouncer would have to be getting beat up for me to step in. Okay. Which isn't real because yeah, it's usually like three on one. Them. Yeah. 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 Well, the uh, yeah, Slim Jim. So pretty working? much, I'm saying like something that could ne almost never happen. Like, yo, if you need help, I got I'm you. your guy. And then they leave that conversation. I'm your like, guy. Dennis Bermudez will fight for yeah. me, so I'm yeah. fucking good. I'll yeah. get him another drink. Even though yeah. I got fucking let's get this guy shit. Six other guys that are you know two sixty, and it's actually their job to protect one another. <laughs> You're in there. You're in there. Hey, if all else fails. That's for me to say. <laughs> if all seven of you take ill. Well, a lot of times it's not. I'm in. Everyone's not that big at Mary's. No. And it's even the all the, the bouncers, night. they're not that big. Raleigh, the guy who we're cool with, like even one night, me and Menace went out, and he's there like dancing, not in his shirt. So we're like, what the fuck are you doing? Wait, wait, wait. Dennis is dancing at Mary Cow's with no, a shirt on. me and Dennis go there, okay. and the guy, Raleigh, is, who's our bouncer friend, is God, there yeah. dancing without not his... In a, not security. In his regular shirt. Yeah. He doesn't have his usual He's just having a good shirt. time. Having a good time. Having so we're like, time. yo, you're not having working tonight? Drinks. And he's like, nah, I'm off tonight. We're like, you're coming with us. Mm. So and he was like, ah, no, I shouldn't. And did he? And uh -huh. I was like, nah, you're coming. You're coming. Like, so where'd, where'd he go? Uh, where'd you we bring went him? to Bayshore. Oh, you took him out of his Where he then, no. Oh. He knows everyone. No, like, yeah, yeah. he's bouncer. He's six eight. Oh, okay. Everyone knows him. I witnessed one of the greatest things where I was like, "Raleigh, find me some talent." And he's looking over the whole crowd, and he goes, "Over there, over there." <laughs> you know what I mean? Get him in. He's the new generation, and uh, uh... bounces at Mary Carroll's. Mm. They all know each other. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a little, it's like a little pro secret club that they're all in. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And a lot of them like all work on like Fire Island together, yeah. and. Yeah, they're yeah. not uh, they're not strangers. Ride Dog was in that secret society for a while when yeah. we were younger. Who Leflair? Yeah, yeah, he, he used to bounce at uh, the carriage house. house where I first met him. They're like a little club. They all go out together. They all know each other. Why? That's where you met him? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he was bouncing at the yeah, carriage house. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's yeah. funny. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, him he, and he liked to fight. Oh yeah, him and this kid Eric Conroy. Yeah, Eric the big, was there with him. Yeah, like Eric seven foot him. kid, yep. Yep, six yep. seven kid. My my cousin punched Eric right in the face one night. It was amazing. It was amazing. Dropped him. Couldn't believe it. Not saying anything about my cousin. Uh, he was a loser. <laughs> but cracked Eric and, you know, the same thing. Like, the is going to fight you. I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. <laughs> I'm like, I am not staying in this, James. You're going to fight. You're going to fight Ryan yourself. But, uh, yeah, Ryan liked to fight. Yeah. Always. He's got uh, some good street fighting stories. Yeah. Some funny ones. Yeah. It was the good old days. Uh, yep. Scary Babylon, man. That's where we're starting that bar crawl, huh? Yeah, but we like, gotta end it, end it at Mary Carroll's, man, because they stay, yeah, they stay open. You're gonna Facetime this number. I bump into obnoxious people all the time, but like most of the time, like you rarely run into people that actually know how to fight. Mm -hmm. So I'm not trying to get into a fight with anyone. I think I think you need to fight. I think we need to get stand into a street fight on Dennis Bermudez Day, right? Oh, I mean, it might happen. Men is hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, no, it, I've got like I don't know, going back a few months, like. I would go upstate, come back, and like, yeah, I got in a fight this week. I'm like, Stan, you're fucking third, like, yeah. you know, you're 34. What do you mean you got into a, a fist fight? Fist fight. I don't start any of these altercations. Hang on, into. he doesn't. Man, it says I, I, I've been there where a dude's like, <laughs> what's so funny? <laughs> like me and Stan are laughing, and some, like some, some black like, dude's Stan like, yo, what's so funny? Fight. And Stan's like, um, no, I'm having, I'm talking yeah. to my friend. I'm not I'm talking like, to He's you. like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like. Cause the thing is, Stan would come, you know, I'd come back and say every time he got in a fist fight, I'm like, 
Stan, like, no, you're you're a piece of shit. You're gonna tell me like <laughs> you're lying to me, telling me that you had no part no, in starting this. Fight, right, right, right. And then right. I watched this happen. This dude, like, you where I had to get in and like be like, hey, man, no, just kidding. We're gonna go over here. Joking, joking. Totally, like, sorry if you got offended. I'll buy you a drink, mm. but Stan's not going that route no, to get Stan's out of a fight. fight. Stan's, Stan's not buying well, any dude a drink no, you're to not. get out of a fight. When is the last fist fight you've been in? Me? I don't know. Yeah. Six months ago? Six months ago, okay. No, probably like two, Summer? two, two months ago. You? Two months ago. Oh, yeah. Where? Two months yeah. ago, maybe. Where was it? Babylon. Babylon. Fucking Babylon, man. But That's I, where you want this bar crawl? It's going to be in... Bro, soon. even when I was dressed as SpongeBob, I almost Ooh. got into a fight. Ooh. Yeah. I went out... Bro, I After went out... After the Menace's... The uh, Halloween bash? No, the night. No, we did a show. We did a show on a Tuesday. And you, oh, you wore the same costume. No, it was Wednesday. What was it? Tuesday? It doesn't matter. Well, it was like the day. night. It was the, a Tuesday. Whatever. It was a Tuesday. No, I didn't go out that night. Uh oh, hang on, because I had I had my my Halloween party the Friday before Halloween. No, you went after Halloween. I went the no, weekend no, no. after Halloween. Y- you had your party on a Saturday. No, no, the, so. Halloween was on a Thursday. That weekend, fight. that get weekend, you went out as, as okay. SpongeBob. Yes. Fight, fight. Yeah. Let me get the fight. Let's no. See. After out. your party, oh, I went out as SpongeBob. Right. You went out as SpongeBob twice. You guys just argue yeah. with each other? Yeah. This? Come on. Uh, all the time. Who cares? So yeah, I went out. I don't know about the fight. After Menace's party, right. I went out as yeah, SpongeBob. Yeah, no, you said you were going out. And I was the only person in costume. Oh, because it wasn't Halloween. It was, I mean. So you looked like a weirdo. Right. You like a fucking idiot. Yeah. He was pulling girls, though. No, I pulled the Because you were peacocking. You're like, no one else had a fucking costume. Bro. Well, let me just be clear. I was shopping in Target. Had to do my dad routine. with they. It, it's pajamas. You were wearing pajamas. Yes. So oh, you saw I my saw costume? them in Target. I saw Stan's costume. <laughs> it wasn't a costume. Cheapo. It was pajamas. So they probably saw Stan. Right. Look at this loser. It's fucked up. Mm. He probably yeah. watched his fucking yeah, what, Dragon whatever. Ball Z. So that's probably why they started with you. So how, how did the fight occur? Did you were you hitting on someone's girlfriend? No, okay. I was leaving. Okay. With yeah, he my was taking lady a friend, piss in the corner, and I was taking a piss outside. In the corner. What bar were you at? Let's set the scene. I left Mary Carroll's and I'm taking a Mary's. piss. And so you're taking a piss between the swell taco and and behind the, by the dumpster. By the I was dumpster. Like, oh, I'm gonna take a piss real quick. I'll okay. Be. So I have to like unzip yeah. and like do some maneuvering to yeah. get because it only goes belly to get his button. hog out. Yeah, because yeah. pajamas the pajamas only go belly button. So it was so weird. I start pissing and yeah. two guys and two girls walk out of Mary Carroll's. And the one guy walks past, the one girl walks past, it the one nice girl walks dick. past. And then this one kid thought, oh, I'm going to push this kid and then oh, take off running. man, that's fucked up. Yeah, so yeah. he pushed me and took off running. <clears throat> and and you did your, did your junk hit? No, the gu- I, pee, oh, okay. I peed good. I'm still you peeing. Oh. And I'm just like, oh, like, my. I'm like, who pushed me? Oof, I'm thinking it's one yeah. of my friends. I turn yeah. and see it's Ooh, not fucks. no one yeah. I know, and he's running. So I'm like, all right, I finished peeing. You, I, I zip myself back did up. Did you chase him? I didn't chase him. I speed walked because I can't run anymore. But I speed walk. And you're in pajamas. And him and his friends are like, him and the girls like getting back into Uber. And I'm like, bro, watch who you push. Like, don't okay. fucking push random yeah. people. Like, you don't know who you, like yeah. what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. What do and you the, do? And then the kid goes, <laughs> bro. And then the kid goes, what are you going to do? Fight me in a SpongeBob costume? And oh, I'm like, bro, awesome. I'm going to fuck you up in a SpongeBob That's, costume. I like that line. That's and then line. the kid went like, oh, shit. And then this his boy gonna, came uh, over yeah. and was like, yo, relax, relax. He's drunk. He's a fucking idiot. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, he is a fucking idiot. Like, don't push anyone. Don't push random people. Like, you don't know yeah. what the fuck's going to come of that. Don't fucking touch me. And then a kid was like, he didn't get within arm's reach. I was just going to hit him. And yeah. then his boy was like, just, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ah, and starts pulling away. Ah, and then his yeah. loud mouth girlfriend started so talking like, you fucking chirping. loser in a SpongeBob costume. Yeah, well. All right, that's pretty good. Then day. you went and smashed point. in a SpongeBob costume? Not in the SpongeBob costume. but You took it off? Yeah. Well, there was off. nothing on underneath. Cause it's nothing on nothing. underneath, yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> I thought the kid pushed you and, like, you know, you're, you're, you're junk and hit. That's that's gross. Like, it well, hits the dumpster. Well, hang on. Well, I don't, oh, I don't God, care. No. no, I don't. Hang on. If I'm taking a piss and you're vulnerable. nobody I know. You're vulnerable. Your no, balls are on. out. If nobody I know pushes me, it's on. Yeah. Like it, you. Well, see that? It was on. Yeah, it was I, on. You were ready. I was going like, to kill him. What's yeah. that? What's, what's that? The step right below spitting on somebody? Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Pushing someone but when, when their back's turned? When they're, and they're peeing? And, and they're then pissing. his excuse, when yeah. I was like, yo, don't fucking push. He's like, who pees in public? I was like, fucking every guy, yeah. you fucking idiot. Like, don't fucking yeah. push random people. It's only Sorry a- I don't sit when I pee. So. Yeah. Like you do. They're gonna, is there going to be public urination at Dennis Bermuda's Day? There will be. Oh, okay. Ah. Yo, you'll see, Rob. I'm going to have We're a We're not promoting it. Okay, but no, it's going to yeah, happen. Yeah. I 
always try to tell people, like, listen, I don't want to fight you. I only it's get Friday to, the 13th. It oh, it is. It is. I only get to that point where I actually get into a fight with someone when okay. they won't let it go. Right, right, right. Like, they size me up. Right, I guess right, I'm chubby right. now. I'm not yeah. in shape. They yeah. look at me and they go. They think you're an easy target these 100%. days, man. Well, it, they uh, do. I see it. Yeah. A, a, an easy target. And in a SpongeBob yeah. uniform. Yeah. Bro, it happens to me all the time. I would. I would. Yeah, I've I been out it. other I nights with Rob Scotty where people start with me and they'll like look at Rob, mm. they'll look at like his other friend and they go, "No, nah, I want him." Yeah, and I'm the fucking biggest one in the group, right? And they're like, "No, nah, I want yeah. this guy," and I'm like, "All right, man," because you're like, it's you're like, like bordering on the side, so- on like the edge of ginger nah. and you're overweight. They're like, "This guy is what does this guy do?" Yeah. You have and no scars on your face. No one has asked you what did you do growing up yet, though, right? Nope. Are you waiting for he, that? Yeah, day? he can't no. wait like this. No, not at all. <laughs> Bro, you know how I... 15 co- years kickboxing. Yeah. Bro, I fuck people up. I just... Yeah, I know you fuck people up. We used to talk about it all the time. I hit what, them with what, like... you used to fight, you're like... No, he I, makes them bite I, on a feint. I make them bite on a feint, and then okay. I just shoot a straight right hand. I like and it, it works okay. all the time. Because they... Yeah, they... They're, <laughs> that's it. They bite on the feint like yeah. this. Yeah, I got it. And then like, boop. All right, so what are you uh, going to call it? Uh, Joey or Belmont? Uh, my buddy Joe. Okay. Joey... Now about where you get on in the future. Who's Joey? Joey Albright. Joey. Yeah. Rich is listening. He's giving us a listen. Yeah. Well, it's all you're on. <laughs> Yo, big dog! Yo, whoa, whoa. Turn it horizontal. What the fuck's up? Turn your phone horizontal. Like this? That looks yep. Awesome. See that? <laughs> the gang. What's up? So we have, we have my strength uh, coach. What's going on? Rob nice Labianto. You, you can bounce you? some things off of him. We can't see your full face. You can oh. see the beard though. The beard yeah. looks great. Great beard. Yeah. And then, Definitely. you know, my co host, Stan the Man. This Definitely. is my he, I mean, he's my friend too, but I met him through my older brother, Dean. They've been many of fights together. Since we're talking street fights. Yeah. But we are a fighting slash like, you know, man Life, show. Lifestyle. Man show now. So Joey, you used to be a professional uh BMX racer. Yes. You know, a lot of people might not know that. When did you start getting into... When did you decide, like, you know what? I'm going to fucking race for money on a bicycle. So, so like, I I did it like everybody, right? Like, around the neighborhood. Right. Whatever you make, and you always you make, won. Yeah, well, you make... Yeah, whatever. You make homemade fucking jumps, et cetera, et cetera. And then, like... So, like, when I was younger, I never had the situation to actually race. Just, like, because of my upbringing or whatever. It just, it just wasn't financially, like... It, so as I got older, I actually started really, really late. I, I didn't start until I was like, uh, like 15, 14, which is really, really late. So uh, I would do it here and there. And then like I started doing it more and more and just got like better and better at it. And uh, but I honestly like I was kind of like a shit show. I didn't take it serious until I got older. Um just because I was such a fuck up just in general in life. Yeah. So, uh, so you yeah. were, would you say you were born in like, not the ghetto of Socrates, but like the, the rougher neck of the woods in Socrates? Yeah. Like, I mean, I was like in Mount Marion, which is, yeah, I guess that's what they used to call it. But it, it was just, it was just a neighborhood that just like stuck together, right? Like, if yeah. you came into our neighborhood and you had a, you know, if someone came in and they had a problem with Dennis, well, they had a problem with everybody, you know, and that's right. just, we just, we we're just, we're a real tight group because all of us grew up. I mean, Dennis, like, you know, we we're all, most of us didn't have, most of the neighborhood didn't have like their dads, right? So, right. like, it, it was different. Like, I didn't have my mom, right? So, so when you're younger, you, it was, it was something's got to give. So like when you don't have a father, you have, you have your friends more. Yes. Yeah, so as, as fucked up as it is, like it was, that was just normal in our neighborhood. Right? right. So, um, yeah, we were just tight, but we all just, it just, it just, we were just a real, real tight, but that the neighborhood that I grew up in and I'm still in, like, it was like that from generate the generation before us. And then the generation, you know, it was just, yeah, it's just kind of like how it, how it was. Um, we were just all tight. We just all came from just, you know, broken families and shitty situations. And we just all just had each other's back. And I mean, it's just, I don't know. It's, Is Matt, do now, you think Matt, Mar- kind of Matt Marion's still like that? Like with like the, no. the, the kids now? No, 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 no. We were okay. the last generation. We were the last generation of that. Cause these motherfuckers were rolling up a party. They'd be like, Oh shit. Like really? Matt Marion's here. 
Like, oh god. And like yeah, someone was getting oh. beat up. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, Stan, you would have been perfect for Matt Mary. Before we before we had you on, Stan was telling a story of how he almost beat some dude up. Uh, all right, Joey, you're wearing a SpongeBob pajamas, right? Are they like it's the, the week. Crew, it's the week the before the Halloween, crew, basically, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're taking a the piss outside a bar. Some dude you don't know pushes you and then runs away. And he's like getting an Uber. Is there anything said to that dude, or like, or you're just clocking him? No, you just, you just got to run him down. <laughs> Stan, 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 fast paced Stan him sped walked yeah, to, yeah, to him and was like, yo, you shouldn't push people you don't know. And he's like, what are you going to do? And then Stan was like, I'm going to fuck you up. Yeah. And then he goes, uh, oh, shit, this is going to happen if I keep running my mouth. So he started, like, bailing out. So my older brother and, like, Joey and, like, Matt Marion, like, there was nothing set. They would just hit people. Yeah. Well, it was just like. I mean, you could never do, obviously, now what we used right, to do. Right, right. You guys would all like, be like... Yeah, it's just, you just can't you just can't do it. But it's just like, I don't know. It was just like, what's... what's Why? There's no reason for talking. Like, why are you talking? <laughs> yeah, gonna, like, like, you did... You, you did something. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, like, when I... After like, I hit you, you like, you're not going to be like, why would you do that? Yeah, like, Spongebob pushed you. So it's yeah. like, we, you know, you, like, there's nothing to be doing. You know, it's just like, what the fuck are you putting your hands on me for? Yeah. Yeah, like your crew stand. Do you hang on, Joey? Would you? I don't do the pushing thing. Yeah. I hit people if they get within arms reach of me, but I will talk some shit. Oh, okay, that is funny. <clears throat> so, so obviously, Joey, you know, like there's like, it, you there's conflict. It's going down. So when Stan, like, if you get within the, within range to hit Stan, Stan just hits you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, personal space. Like I never used to understand that fucking saying. Like people used to say, like I told. I'm going to tell him to fucking hit me first. Like, what the fuck are you going to tell somebody to hit me first? <laughs> no, yeah. So you're no, already no, losing? No chance. I, yeah, like, what, what you gonna, I, I just never understood that. Now, and hang yeah, on, hang I mean, on. I've done that, but I'm ready for a rock back. Yeah, but I mean. If you on, swing at me and miss, I'm fucking knocking you out. And Is, also. Does it give you free, like, free, like, oh, he started this. I'm going to fucking kill him. Like, you. Yeah, you, yeah. I, yeah. That's right, right? Nope. You tried it. Yeah. You're done. But, like, you hit tried. me. Like. Hit me. I dare you. I'm looking to slip it, dip it, rock back, and then fucking you're also, mollywop you. You're, it's a lot different, too. You're, you're a trained fighter. Now, <laughs> hang on. Saying, but, be, but, but before being a trained fighter, I, I've i definitely said that. That was your go just, And that's just because, like, I'm tough, and I know you hit like a fucking bitch, and I'm going to fucking eat your best mm -hmm. shit and then fucking murder you. Well, we know you like getting hit. I mean, yeah. We've all seen all your fights. Seen your career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you don't you don't start you don't start getting going yeah. until you get fucking yeah. hit. So let's <laughs> let's let's go back to BMX. Then I want to get into your son and then we go back to fighting. street fighting. Street fighting. I like the street fighting. So so like the the BMX so the BMX thing was like I said, I didn't really start taking it serious till till I got older. And uh I got actually I don't even know if you know this, Dennis, but I so like when I was like fifteen, sixteen um, now like 15, I got in some trouble and I got put in a, like a, like a, like a, like a kid's home. detention, right? Yeah. 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 So it was like, but it was like, it was mixed. It was boy. It was like boys and girls and et cetera, et cetera. So I got taken out of my ha house and I got put in there and like went to school from there. But I was in that, I was in that alternative school for kids that got thrown out of regular school for, you know, obviously for fighting and all that stuff. So it was just a bunch of kids with just fucking anger issues. Yeah. Um, so when they released me out of there, I went, and that's when I went, I moved to Ruby and lived, the Hendersons took me in. Okay. And uh, they were like the savior. If, it, if they didn't take me in, it would have been fucking game over for me. So that's like when my racing started being like way more consistent because they were taking all of us all over the country, you know, racing and racing. But I still was like, I mean, I was only fucking five minutes over the back road from Mount Marion, right? Right. So I was like... I You're still stuck in your old ways, but, like, you have your passion yes. for BMX. So it was like this. Like, I love these guys that I grew up with. Like, I loved, it. I loved everything about, like, what we were doing on the streets and all that. But, like, I, I love BMX so much. But so I guess I was, like, like, didn't... 
maybe they didn't fit now that I look at it, like maybe like I thought it would be like weak, right? Like I'd be weak if I like pick BMX over, over them and like right. having, their, having their back and all that. And, you know, it just would look like a sellout. So right? real quick, I want to pause you right here. I want to go somewhere that, cause like for me, it was wrestling. Like wrestling was, I took wrestling over pussy. I took wrestling over my boys. Like, over food like wrestling was my like shit mm -hmm. now do you think it's because we had success in this that we're like man if we just go a little bit further in sacrifice we could do even better or do you like i don't know i'm trying to think of like something to put kids towards so they like fuck bad friends fuck girls like to zone in on these things that are going to be beneficial to their life does that it's, make sense? I'm trying to think of like, cause I saw no. what you're saying and I've been, you know, through it. And like, I don't think you guys have been in like a situation of something you, like, I know Rob fucking loves surfing and loves snowboarding, but like he never competed in them. Like right. what stopped you right. from trying to compete in those things? Like money, time. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, you feel like, like what pushes certain people to the edge of like, I'm going to commit 100% to BMX and I want to, you know, be the best at this like where does it go between being like a you know an amateur to well you're still an amateur right because you're still pushing this you're still an amateur at the yeah, time yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah i'm gonna do i'm gonna go 100 i think i think it's risk i think it's like am i gonna well i th actually the thing you know? is i think as like i think it has to be instilled like when he said 15 16 when you're still like yeah a child yeah. if you will you know what i mean like your balls dropped you know what I mean? You got you know you're fucking stronger than you were when then you're when you were you know ten or twelve. You go but all like, in. you're like, like you're going around the world. You're going around the U.S. racing, man. You got to go all in. Right? Like, you know, you actually, the thing is, I had Spencer Christian. Is there someone that you had that was like, no, like you're awesome for this that you looked up to? So maybe that's um, the answer. I I don't know. Like I had I had people that like rode that were like older than me you know what i mean like i had this kid that like, you looked up to yeah his name was like his name was lou delfino he actually still rides to this day and he was Damn. like he was he was he was like when you rode with him so i was always intimidated to riding with him right because he was so smooth he was so good it, i mean i guess it's like anything i'm sure when you know you guys go to the ring and spar with someone that's so good you're like you, you're when yeah. you first start right you're watching yeah. him and you're like, fuck man they're so good you know too much respect that you're like i can't win yeah, but he was, Lou was, even to the day that I stopped, like, BMXing and all that, he was that guy that was, like, it, he would see what you did wrong, and he would just help. He would take his own time from riding just to help you, to help you, to help you, to help you. I know? feel I mean, like BMX is, it, it well, I, I, not, I feel it's, it's one of those extreme sports, like snowboarding, yeah, skateboarding, like skateboarding, right? like, like we're, culture. like, and yeah, it's a culture where you see someone that has potential. You're like, man, I want to fucking help this dude. And with mm -hmm. no, I want nothing back but just, you know, you no. know gnarly, dude. Yeah, no, he, this dude is like, he was just one of those. And not just with me, with like anybody he rode with. He just like, just his knowledge, his knowledge is like, stop pedaling here, pedal here, or, you know, do this, do this. He was just, he was just like that. But it was, yeah, he would, I would say like, I really, really looked up to him and like his style was just, it was just flawless. You know what I mean? Like until the literally riding with him till the day that I stopped like actually riding BMX and stuff and was still riding with him. Like I would still watch him and try to intimidate, like, you know what I mean? Try to do what he's, he's doing. Like, right. you know, and, it, and that was in my thirties, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, uh, late twenties, no early thirties. So, so when know, did you, when did you hang up the, what were you called the shoes? Yeah, so I haven't raced since I'm, I forget. So what, wait, what is I, that called when you retire from racing? You're hanging up the shoes. That's what it is. Because they clip the in, or the yeah, pedals. They don't. I, hanging I up don't, the bike. I don't, I don't think there's anything. In there. yeah. well, putting the just, bike. Just hang it up. Stop. Putting the bike up for up, at yeah. the garage in the sale. Garage, yeah. <laughs> Sell the bike. So I uh, I had that really bad wreck in. So I won the title in 2000. I could be off like a year, like by the exact year, just because how the BMX schedule goes. So I think 2012, I won that title, and then the following year, I was going to go to the World Championships in Holland, and I think two months before it, I don't know if you remember this, but I had that really, really bad. Yeah, crack. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and I had bleeding on the brain. Oof. I broke my back, my yeah. elbow, my just I that's, just mangled myself. That's what yeah. stops me from the extreme stuff. You, that's it. I think there yeah. you go, Dan. That's it. Every one of these guys in the culture with you guys, BMX, skateboarding, surfing, snowboarding, you got to be willing to be like, I'm could well, break my back. It's, it's at called, any and we'll get time. we'll we'll get into it when I'm we like, talk about his nope. son. <laughs> yeah. It's it's but, riding on the edge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. And then like, yeah. but even when I was so I crashed so hard yeah. that like. I like tried to, you know, my first instinct was try to get up. So I like, got up, I was just speed wobbled out. Right. And like puking in my helmet. And then like everything went snow white, literally snow white. Like I can't even, there's no Can you way. take us like, I've, there's video of it no? Yeah. Yeah. There's a video. Of Can it. you tell us like what, like what are the, what speeds are you hitting in a BMX race? So, I mean, it all depends on the track. If it's a more of a downhill track or a flatter track. Right. Just varies. give us a generic. So uh, I would say 30. Yeah. 25. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, about that. And you and, have a, a thinner helmet than a, a motocross helmet, but yeah, a yeah, full yeah. shield. Full feel, full face helmet, you know, DOT approved. You're, and, cl and I, you're clipped into your pedals. Yeah. Which like at those speeds, putting your leg down isn't really doing shit. No. And, and we're so experienced. Like we ran those clip pedals for so long. We can get out of them really, really, like really, really fast. So where you could like kind of, Toss yeah, the yeah, bike. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I can get you can get out of them quick. Like you, we've all ate shit so many times. Mm, right. Like just, Especially just at that level. To, yeah, we just know how to eat shit. Right. And obviously, at that time I didn't eat. I didn't. So eat run us. Quick, can you know? run us back through like what happened in that accident? So get graphic I, with it too. I had been doing like I've been I had been doing like this this line. It was like so it was the last straightaway. It was like a rhythm section, and I was doing so it was basically like the easiest way to describe it. It was like kind of like four obstacles, right? So like I was jumping and landing on my back wheel and manualing through the last two. Right, right. right. So it's really that rhythm quick. section is like small bumps, right? Like little moguls yeah, that consistent. Whack, whack, yeah, whack. Yeah. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So when I jumped and went to put my back wheel down, I put it down a little bit too soon. Mm -hmm. and it Which sent set to uh, like on the knuckle. Uh, and, yeah, head uh, first. Uh, I just, I just, my head just buried the next one. Oh, man, man, that was just that was just it. It was just, you know, it was just game over from there. So you come you, as soon as you hit, you pop up. You don't fucking know which ways left. Yeah, or right. so I, pop, I popped up and I thought I like knew what was going on. Like you're good. And I was just like, you know, wind knocked out of me. You know, right. All that. And so I like I got up because it was at the finish line and I seen little kids there and I was like, this is going to fucking scare them. And I'm I was always like with BMX trying to get kids involved. Mm -hmm. Right, right, sport. right. And like. It was a practice night, so people like on practice nights, people can come there like for their first time, right? And it's like the finish line was kind of by the concession stand. All the parents oh. and shit are hanging out, so it's like oh. I, you don't want to scare you, like the first. And, yeah, you know, what I'm a saying? generation like, of BMX up. kids. Yeah, I jumped up and just folded, man. It was like I speed wobbled and just wobbled and wobbled, and then like I just dropped and every like I said when everything got white. I was I was pretty calm until everything got white. white. I literally thought I as crazy as it sounds, like I thought that I went blind. Really? So it felt it realistically was probably for maybe five to ten seconds, but in all honesty, it felt like it was like ten minutes. Oh. So handsome beautiful oh, Rob is man. like you know, he was he was going to be a doctor before he's like, I want to train athletes. Yeah. What part of the brain affects the eyes? Back of the head. Smack the back of the head. You can hit your optical nerve. I mean, at that point, that's probably what like happened, no? Yeah, sure. If you went head first, you don't know what you were hitting. And you were throwing up and puking, too, right? You said? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. vomit. Woo. Bit shock. Yeah. Concussion. Yeah. And then yeah. down. Out. Did you go out after that? Like, So, or... no, I didn't oh, go okay. out. Oh, okay. All right. Um, like when, it's kind of like when Jeremy Stevens <laughs> needs you in the face. Yeah. <laughs> Similar. But I actually still take. So I, didn't I, had throw some, up. I had some bleeding on the brain. Oh, I yeah. Actually, Jeez, this okay. day, take, um, you didn't throw up yet. I got to take like blood thinner pills. Oh, wow. So okay. I so I won't have like a seizure yeah. just or a clot or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, because the headaches were so fucking gnarly after that. And then like when I was going to the neurologist, mm -hmm. so they wanted to give me the, you know, I won't take nothing prescription. Like there's right. just, like, there's zero chance. Like most of my family were addicts. It's just, so you don't want any of it. Yeah, like it's just how I grew up. I'm just against all that stuff. I'm just there's no way because it, it, it just go downhill. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I battle with that, and then you know we did those blood thinning things, and that that actually helped like a lot. But I still would have the gnarliest headaches like Jeez, in the back of my back head, head for years. 
and they'd come and they'd go, right? So it ended up being, I go to the eye doctor just for shits and giggles and we do this eye test. And my one eye on the side where I hit my head was like super weaker Oh wow! than the other one. So I, I didn't even say this to mm-hmm. the doctor. I didn't tell him about my accident right. or anything. I'm just like, you know, I got these headaches and He's yeah, like, yeah, were yeah, you yeah. in a car accident? Like, I'm not really <laughs> yeah. a car accident. Yeah, like, did you get hit so, inside the head by a car? No. So then I, then I ended up explaining it to him. And then, dude, I got glasses and I have, it's been since, not last, yeah, last February or whatever. I have not had a headache since. Oh, right. So yeah, it's like so. all these years I went fucking dealing with these headaches and, you know, ended up being something as. as Easy as, as a pair of glasses? Easy as a pair of glasses. Yeah. Or just, yeah, don't take a. 30 mile an hour BMX yeah, fall to the head. That could have saved you too, but hey, I mean, so yeah. no guts, no glory. Am I right? Yeah. Ben? So, I, so I tried this, to come back from, I, did yeah, come, I yeah. actually did come back from that. So I, obviously I missed Holland. Mm-hmm. I, like in my mind, I was like, oh, I'm going to make it back for Holland. Yeah. For Holland. And right. Like, I don't know what I was thinking, but reality is I didn't All competitors have yeah. that mindset. Get right back on. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I ended up coming back to the, the finals which is thanksgiving week it's actually coming up soon i went to the to the grand nationals which is basically the super bowl for bmx mm-hmm. and that was my first race back and um i killed it man like i made the main i i got i think i got third overall it was uh that was two months after no it oh. was so this happened in july and the grands were this yeah, in november, november, october, november. so oh, um, months after it was pretty oh, it was man. it was pretty crazy so but, i mean i so real quick, the Michael Jordan of BMX, can he live off that income? Oh, yeah. Sure. So I, I think, I think the more I've learned about just, you know, sports and obviously, Brand. Team, you know, it's there's, there's, when I was doing it, you know, there was probably five of the top, you know, the Michael Jordans, you know, right. that were above, that were above me, obviously, that were making a living, right? Um, now, if I had to guess. And I could be totally wrong about this, but the sport hasn't, it definitely hasn't um, progressed any, like with outside sponsors mm-hmm. and purse money and all that stuff. So I would say, you know, three to five. Mm-hmm. And it's an Olympic sport now. It's right. harder, it's harder than it's ever been. Yeah. And these guys were literally sacrificing their lives, you know, their health, their, yeah. you know, everything for, it's for the top of the top. So picture the Michael Jordans of BMX. It's and like this weekend, they'll probably have 50 to whatever it is. Um, elite pros. And well, this weekend, it might be a little bit different because it's the final. So it might be more, but at a regular national, you know, and this is people from all over the country and their rate, only eight people make it to the final, right? So you got to go through right. all that qualifying. So if 50 people show up or 100 people show up, the win, which is so goddamn hard to do, is $1,000. That's insane. That's ridiculous. Well, now, That's who crazy. are the big names? <clears throat> who are the big names um, in BMX? Like, I'm thinking of, so, like, TJ Lavin I know of, Matt yeah, Hoffman. So those, those are all so his those, boys. So those guys were um, those guys were dirt jumpers. So they made money, right? Those dirt jumper guys, they made they made they made loot in the day. Um, but like right now, BMX wise, um, it's like, you know, Joris Daudet, he's from France, you know, Connor Fields, he actually won the Olympics last last go around. He's from Vegas. Um uh, honestly the South Americans and the Frenchies kind of are running the show yeah. right now. You so know, if, the if they're called dirt jumpers, what is your style called? It's just BMX. Racing, it's racing. Just BMX. Like yeah, because yo, right? I remember going to a park and hit. He was there with you know a couple of locals and like watching him like send this bike. I don't what 15, 12 feet in the air. I just like just throwing it around like nothing. And I'm like, what? Like I'm like look at the jump. Well, they make it look so easy. Yeah. And I'm like, I think I could do that. And then when I, when you're no actually chance. there in person, you're like, nah, I'm good. No you're doing like bunny hops. I'm good. No, uh, you don't are, even touch the ramp. Are these guys the same guys doing um the uh the uh the uh, mountain bike cross too? And are you guys different. Do that? So, so yeah. it is, but it's funny. A lot of guys that do both. Or? They end up switching over okay. to mountain biking. Okay. Um, is I there more money in mountain biking? I don't know how that works. This is the problem with. Because so you're like. 
I don't know. Let's say you were, what, seven years younger? You would be in mountain biking now. No? Oh, yeah, yeah. I like, mean, it's completely crazy. Because my older brother started mountain biking. He was like, yo, I know you're into biking. You're good. Come come ride with me. Joey goes a few times like, oh, this is my shit. Man. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, I, so, like, Dennis, or Dennis's brother's been trying to get me to, like, mountain bike for, like, the last two years. And I was just like, nah, 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 nah. nah. And then, like, so this year I finally did it. And, like, I would have never had the finances to be able to do this when I was yeah. younger. But – it's so fucking badass. Like it's if insane. I would have. It's like, insane. If have you ever mountain biked like downhill? No, not no. not legit. Like when I, I've gone like one or two times. I went one time in California. I went one time with Dean. When I'm done, my fucking <laughs> hands are like this. But these dudes are throwing backflips now. I'm watching. I I watch like the. It's on TV. They have like the Red Bull series and stuff. Yeah. They're doing oh, backflips not- off of cliffs. Like. I can't. I cannot believe what these guys are what's, doing. What's the damage on those bikes? That for, those, I don't know, twenty five grand. So, so I mean, some of them are really, really expensive. Like the one that I got in April was thirty five hundred right. for, and it's not a. It's obviously it, it's really a good, good. Bike, right? It's, it's nothing like the you pro know, level what the guys, guys are doing. Yeah. Say, like I'm looking at one right now that I ain't, I ain't gonna be able to. I'm trying to sell my bike. Like the one that I that I want right now, it's like it's like eight thousand yeah. dollars. You know what I mean? It's crazy. But to you do know what I mean? They do now. Yeah, and, and you said and that's like, not even a, that's not even a top of the right. Thing. I yeah. mean, it's, it's a great bike, right? But it's like it's but it's like anything, right? The, there's just so many different levels mm-hmm. to to everything, and yeah, they're crazy. Uh, but I'm having, a, you know what? Like, so BMX was my like drug, right? Right, <laughs> and so since I stopped BMX in, and like I'm a workaholic to keep my son, you know, and his goals right now going. Like I had that three-year void of just nothing right all, like all i did was work 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 and then it's like thinking money will make you happy yeah 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 and it's just you know it's just work stress and it's just all oh, you think you go home you think about my work and then i got this mountain bike and i started doing this and i was just doing it one night a week wednesday nights and it's like it fucking broke up that stress where like i was like a, a little like a kid again like i couldn't wait to go ride my bmx bike well now it's like fuck i couldn't wait till wednesday nights like me and my buddy dean are going to do these because we do these group rides with this older group that have been doing it for 25 years and it's a fucking blast yeah, it's like it's 15 awesome. 20 guys and it's like it's they're awesome and like when i first started in the spring i wasn't really good like they just they took you under their wing these old timers and they're like teaching you shit and it's it's just like it reminded me of like there's this old guy that does rock he rides his name's Gary and he's been you know doing it for a hundred years and he kind of took me under his wing kind of like Lou did when I raced mm-hmm. BMX it reminded me of him like he was like he just little things he would teach me and help me like that's what those guys are what's what's the trail uh, up from the North South Lake that brings you back down the Palinville? I went with like Ryan Clark and Dean, and I had a three hundred dollar mongoose from Walmart. <laughs> well, so you guys have a, is- you guys have like a mecca over there though, right? So you guys are I didn't it's a huge uh, kind of population. You guys BMXing and not a biking? mecca, I would not say really? like not, no? not like not too many people from Saudis are like yeah, I'm going mountain biking like, this weekend. A lot of dudes from upstate. It's like New York, people come. Vermont, it's like people come or, from all yeah. over. Yeah, where are they? So, where are you guys like getting like? Is it Vegas? Are a lot of guys coming from Vegas? No. Um, oh, BMX wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. um, so I think I think it's like with that. So Florida was re- Florida's really really big with BMX. Okay. California, you ride all year Florida, round, Florida. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like when I was racing, like really seriously racing pro and doing you know the whole series. You know, in the winter times, I'd either go to Florida. Most of the time, I went to Got Florida. It. A few times, I went out um, to California with my buddy that was training me at the time. He he actually won a elite pro title. He was from Australia. My buddy Kalen Young, he was he trained me the year that I won my title. So I went out to California a little bit, but um, Florida's you can't beat Florida, man. And especially in the winter yeah. time, there's and there there's literally so many tracks. It's like. Just pick from you know, just pick. Yeah. So <laughs> now I wanna I wanna transition a little bit. So like before you had your bad crash, you had a son. Yeah. You well, had, had you had already gotten him into BMX cycling. Yeah. Was so he already two... in a dirt bikes by the time you had your crash? Uh, uh, sort of. So 
he so I had TJ what when I was 18 19 somewhere around there and um he stopped so I got I was still I was still a complete fuck up like for right. the first three years of TJ's life like I was a dad but the reality is I really wasn't a fucking dad right I was you know I was too worried about hanging out with everybody and doing all that bullshit but like I said when I got to like 21 is when I really started taking it serious I got T- TJ was riding I had him riding a bike with no training wheels at before he was three <laughs> he was racing at three years old so and then he was racing nationals with me you know. Cause he's a three time national. Yeah. He wanted, he was a three time national champ too. And he did dirt bikes on and off. Um, and then like, he just came to me once. So he raced BMX till he was like 10, 11, about 12. And then he just came to me one day and he was like, ah, oh, dad, I don't want to do this no more. And I'm like, Fuck. like we were on the same factory teams. Like we were on the same team together. So I'm, I'm Which is traveling. cool, man. That's really yeah, cool. Like, fuck, I'm traveling the country with my son. Like, we're racing on somebody else's dime. Like, we're just, it was just, I'll never be able to explain how yeah. bad it was. You were like fucking so... Dale Earnhardt and fucking Dale Earnhardt, Dale Earnhardt. Dale Earnhardt Jr. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was fucking Shake and bake. And, like, he was really good. And it was, like, it was just such a, it was just so badass. Um, Nothing, nothing will ever, like, beat the years that yeah. I had this racing. It's only kid. downhill from here for you now. I know, dude. And then he comes to me and he's like, and he was, he was really, really good at it. And he's like, yeah, I don't think I like, and so he like was, he was crack. His voice was crackling. Like he was afraid to do it. And he was going through puberty. Yeah. He's like, dad, I don't think I want to like race no more. And I, I was so like, not what? like a bitch. I was so broken hearted, bro. I was like, like, like it was just like, but, what was I gonna do? I'm like, right. he was, I was just bummed because he was really, really good. Mm-hmm. Right. And I do think, I mean, we never know, right? But I really think he had a shot at at going someplace. Maybe, maybe not. Whatever. Right. Right. But it, I just like I. And but then it's like, what do you do? I'm not gonna force my right. kid to go to the races with me mm-hmm. for my own. Just right. to be selfish, right? Like, hate it. Yeah, after a while, yeah, he ain't gonna want to hate. And yeah. I can understand. And it got boring. Like, so he was winning a lot. Like, he won a lot. And then it was like, BMX. It's kind of like you, you race because you go through all these qualifiers. So if you win your first race, you kind of sit around all day till the final. Mm-hmm. So it, I get where it's like it's boring and all that stuff. And motocross, you know, it's just like race, race, race. You're like you're just racing. So, Dad, I don't want to fucking do BMX anymore. I want to. Yeah. I want to race motorcycles. I want to yeah. race dirt bikes. That's not that so, bad. That's pretty cool, right? Like hang transition, on. like okay. Yeah, but you had All already right. had your fucking bad accident on a bicycle. Your son <laughs> yeah. wants to go six times faster than that and do. <laughs> and how much uh, higher? Like how? Yeah, hit bigger yeah, yeah. ramps with okay. the same protection. But and you're like, where is there more money in motocross or BMX? So there's if you make it, there's more money in motocross. Yeah. If you make it right, um, but also like motocross, there's a lot more opportunities to make money. Like for example, he rides for or his gear sponsors Fly Racing. He's been with I raced for Fly my whole entire BMX career. He raced for Fly when he raced BMX, and then he's still racing for Fly. Like so, they have that's pretty dope. Yes, yeah, it's, it's really like they're like family. They're yeah, it's just like they're just so awesome. They're just such an awesome group. So they have like a contingency. Like he just got a his. Uh, contract for 2020 so there's so many different ways for him to make money with them right like they give they give you so many opportunities you know if you win an lcq well if you make them the night show you get a certain amount of money if you win an lcq you get a certain amount of money if you get you know with an lc2 lcq so an lc yeah so for example like at the supercross races they only take 20. Well, back up a little bit because the people that are watching this probably don't know shit about motocross. Yeah. Your son had to do like the the amateur leagues, if you will, of like riding like not to, not in arenas. He was riding like yeah, yeah, in yeah, the no, woods. We, like in, Yeah, we, we went through like the amateur ranks with with that. And uh, how long did know, that went, take? So he, again, he started late in motocross like I did in BMX. You know, most kids have been racing motocross, been racing since they're five years old, you know, all the way through. We didn't start racing until he was, 
I, I didn't. He didn't go to his first training facility until he was a teenager. I right? believe fifteen. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's late. Yeah. So again, wet, a really, really late start. And when he was doing it, you know, he was doing it kind of inconsistently before, you know, racing locally. And, right. Right. You right. know, his uncle take them here, take them there. Cause that was kind of their thing. You know, it was crystal, you know, crystal was with, you know, Roger at the time and Roger raced, you know, growing up. And so they got TJ actually into it. So honestly it was like their thing. I was away racing BMX and they were doing the motocross thing. Um, cause that's how we got into it. And then, you know, some things had changed and then, you know, uh, I kind of had to put the racing on the back burner and it was, uh, you know, either help TJ with his career and put mine to the side. Well, not that mine was a career because, you know, it's not like I was making a living off of BMX, but put my, you know, dreams, my dreams to the side. <laughs> so I was like, I lived my dream. You know what I mean? I was a, I, yeah. was, a fuck, I was a fuck up kid from Mount Marion park that got to ride a little kid's bike on somebody <laughs> else, you know, on somebody else's dime, travel the country, you know, go to Puerto Rico, go here, go there, met some of the most, fucking raddest people ever um and got some pretty badass memories out of all of it throw that to the side and now help this kid do his thing right. so that's what i did you know and just just being a dad you know because he's like, he's what, what is he he's like 21 now no no nah, he's, he's 20 okay yeah. but at you know so obviously he's done with high school he has his ged at what age are you like you know what no school you're gonna be homeschooled you're gonna ride full time so 15. So when I took him to that, um, the training facility for the first time, I took him down to Georgia. So it was an opportunity had came to us kind of out of the blue to go there with, with a friend of TJ's, um, who raced nationally. And he went to that facility every, every winter. Well, um, his parents work a shit ton and the, the person that was staying with him down there, it just didn't work out. Um, whatever happened with that. So TJ and him were really good friends. So the parents actually came to me and were like, hey, listen, we need somebody to watch, you know, our son down there. We know, you know, what if we bring TJ down there so he can take care of this opportunity and you kind of be the guardian for, you know, our son, et cetera, et cetera. So that's actually how we went down there the first year. But So you like, were just down there being a goddamn chaperone for? Pretty much. So like literally went down there with it's crazy that they trusted you yeah well <laughs> yeah no right <laughs> so uh so it was like kind of and it was like but the situation was i had to take him out of school you know he's gonna have to be homeschooled like there's just so much of it right and like, right just, so i know what it takes to like with anything in life like so with racing with fighting like you guys did and all you know with anything in life like if you want to really make it it's yeah. you're all in or you're not. Yeah. And I got a lot of shit from a lot of people. Like you're taking your kid out of, out of school and all that stuff. But like, it's, you're all in or you're just not, you're not make you're not going to make it in anything in life. If you're not all in, you're not going to make it. I think that's what you were talking about earlier when you're like, what's the difference between really loving something and being passionate about it or trying to push yourself to that professional level. You can't do anything it's, it's else. Sacrificing things. You, yeah, yeah. You can't do anything else. It's to gotta be your life, your goal. These kids, so these told, guys are so good. Exactly. So I sat my TJ because I've never lied. TJ knows everything about my life. Everything. I was an open book. Some may say, uh, I don't give a fuck what anybody says. I, I would, if my son asks me a question, I'm not going to lie. He knows that I was a hustler in the streets. He knows that I've done, made illegal money. He knows everything. I'm, I'll never hide anything from my son. I sat his ass down and I said, listen, I'm not going to pay the fucking mortgage for three months. I ain't paying my truck payment for three months. I ain't paying shit for three months. We're going to go down here. You're going to take advantage of this or you're not. And I did. I didn't pay a fucking bill for three months because I'm a worker. Like I've been a hustler my whole life and I, I'm a worker. I'm going to go home. I'm going to lace my work boots up. I'll get myself out of the hole. Right. Mm -hmm. And we went down there and the kid just worked his ass yeah. off, worked his ass off. And, to be honest with you, most of the time we were down there, like, because I couldn't afford to give them really good dirt bikes. So we were blowing dirt bikes. You know, we had used shit. And it was like, as a dad, I just was so broken hearted for the kid because he's like working his ass off in the gym. He's doing everything that I asked him to do, but his fucking dirt bikes are piles of shit. You know, they're breaking, they're this, they're that. But he did get like 
a lot better. But with anything I have, and I could be wrong about this, but I believe everything's a three year process. Yeah. Right. Like the first year is just getting your feet wet. The second year is like, let's push the limits. Right. And then the third year, it's like, like starting a new business. You can't make money until the third year. They say, yeah, 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 exactly. Like let's hit some goals, you Mm -hmm. know, the third year. And he had the breakthrough year, like his third year there. Now I was financially bet every year I figured out because motocross is so expensive and it's, it's a hundred percent on me. What's, what's the damage on, I don't know. Funding a, a solid. Three, give me, give me the three levels. Months, three months of work. No, so you're putting no, yourself like, in no. debt. Right? Well, no, he was just saying oh, just yeah, to yeah. even yeah. get a, just to get the kid started. Yeah, let's go three months in debt. So no, but after, like at that level, what? How much to run a fucking motorcycle for a year? So and training and shit. It's. I mean, a bike is eight thousand mm-hmm. dollars. You normally that's, and that's lower level now. That's a stock bike, yeah. bone stock from the dealership. You go and you buy mm-hmm. a dirt bike and you push it up the thing. Well, at his level, even amateur wise, when he got you know to the B class, to the, you know to the A class, it's you got to mod those motors. Like to have a competitive motor, you're talking five G. So Jeez. picture going to a dealership and buying a, a bike for eight thousand dollars, bringing it home, taking the motor out of it before your kid even rides it taking the suspension off it. You send the suspension to the suspension guy because I got to set it up for his weight, his skill ability, et cetera, et cetera. You take the motor out that's brand new, you send it to the motor guy. The motor guy mods it for five grand. So, you know what I'm saying? You're, you know, the suspension. It makes it less liable, reliable. Oh, yeah. Less reliable. And then you're talking the fuel. So for five gallons of race fuel for his dirt bikes, $135. What? Five gallons. What? Yes. Was that, was that they got a monopoly on how that many, shit, huh? How many times you go around the track on that? What, what, what's, so, like, what's your, what's your, you know, a like... pal will, a pal will last when he was doing outdoors, you know, as an amateur, you mm-hmm. go through a pal a weekend. Oh, okay. So, you know, if it's a three, or, you know, most, most amateur nationals are, you know, three, three days long, you, okay. have, you know, Thursday's practice, Friday, nice. Saturday, Sunday, expensive but sport. very expensive sport. So it's, it's, it's crazy. I literally work my ass off for him to do this all my bills are paid i haven't since that one winter i've never been late on a bill since because i said i'll go all in i i, was, I, I, I really hang on stan i really hope we could clip this up and someone sees this and is like oh i got this well he's sponsored now too right is he riding for yeah but that's just like team? in parts kind of he's still you know he's 20 well, years old so he's got fi- probably a couple bills yeah 20 though you finance, should, sh- like the finance part is 100 percent on on me still okay. so i gotta buy the bike mm-hmm. his we, we have a really good suspension guy that we met down in georgia that he took a liking to tj seeing how hard he works so he's been helping tj ever since because he, he's like, joe has hit me up on multiple occasions seeing me at you know in the ufc and like seeing my work i think and like what he's like hey man my son's gotta lose weight or his back's fucked up or it. this or like what i mean he comes at like uh, like, not that I have the answers, but like, there's nothing to lose. Like he's, well, you gotta, he's, you got to ask people like you guys, you get fucked up every day. Right. Training. Right. Like it's like, I don't, I don't give a fuck how, like you guys are, you know, you guys are doing your thing. Like it's like, a, you know, it's a hands on thing. Like I'm sure every day. You have so, to so or- yeah. So real quick before you go a little bit further as a father watching your son race, I'm probably sure you might as well be watching him like about to get in a fist fight. Um. So I've. So I've always taught TJ this, because it's just the right thing to do, right? Like BMX, like all racing can get con- you know to contact sport. I've right. done it. Out of the gate, you're fucking elbowing yes. and fucking and road rash. I've, take, I've taken people out clearly on purpose, put them over a corner, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I've told you even what his BMX did. If it comes to that. It don't matter what the situation is. If you take somebody out, you wait for them at the finish line. If you're man enough to take them out on the track, you have to be man enough to face them at the finish. There's wow. no reason to drag it all on, right? Like you, if there's a situation and you handle it on the track and you blatantly take them out, you have to face the person. And TJ's a pretty, he's aggressive, but he's not really you. dirt. He has, yeah, he hasn't had many situations, a couple situations. And I've watched them, and he's at, sit way at the finish line, and you know they fuck whatever they do. I I never got involved. I'm not getting. I ain't getting involved. You're gonna take care of yourself. 
if a parent got involved, then obviously right, right you Molly walk a motherfucker. At these point, 16, 17 year old kids, you know, they can take care of themselves, right. right? Like, I mean, nowadays, what are they doing anyway? Fuck you, and that's it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he's just he's kind of always been like that. But he, TJ's really, really well liked. Um, he's a real, real humble kid, and he he gets along with you know everybody loves the kid. You know what I mean? So. I'm sure he's gotten some things at the races that I wasn't at that he would, he don't even talk about stuff. Whatever happens at the race, perhaps in the race, you just, you just got to leave it there. You know, it's like in the ring, you just leave it in the ring, right? Whatever right. happens. Right, change, right, right, right. It's over. Gonna, yeah, it's over. It's done. You ain't going to change anything. What are we, we going to do? We just fought. Like, yeah. we're, hey, like in a race, what are we going to do? What are you going to beat me? We just raced. I just, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you won, I lost. All right. So we'll race yeah. again next time. And, so, you know, outdoors, there's 42 of them in the gate. You know right. what I mean? Like 42 make them. So it's like, right. it's. You know, it's it's you know at a professional level, it's a lot. It's a lot different. So where I was going with this is like I've got a cousin, nowhere near the level that your son is. This dude's broken his collarbone, broke his femur. He's broken a lot of shit. And I'm talking to you like TJ's gotten fucked up a few times. Like you're sitting yeah. there watching it. Like what this, what's going through is like my son's dead. Or he's oh get up you're good he's walk it off race or like, like yeah how do you deal with yeah. that that's something. it's it's tough and you know what the toughest part is so since he's turned pro um I don't get to go to his races like I got to work all the time right yeah. so I rarely get to go to his races so that's what's heart wrenching it's like you never know right like you just don't know and and this year was a prime example he was he was in um Michigan at a national. And I was working and I'm watching the, the times and practice on my phone, right? So I see his times. And uh, he was riding really, really good there. I'm like, oh, all right, cool. It gets red. A red flag comes up on the in the corner. That means they red flagged the practice. Somebody got hurt bad. The EMTs have to go out there. So um, right away, so you're like. I, I wasn't thinking anything because so it restarted, right? So I see all the times going and it showed TJ's time go, right? But it did, the lap didn't change. I'm like, oh, that was kind of weird. So everybody's going through, cycling through. TJ's not, his name's not moving. So then it's like, what the fuck? So I get a Facebook message from a guy that I know. I raced BMX with his, uh, his nephew. He was at the race and it was, Joey TJ just crashed in front of me really bad and it's not good at all. Oh, man. He knew I wasn't at that race because he had messaged me the night before saying, Hey, you're going to be, be there. I'll come see you. I said, no, TJ's there. I'm home working. So I get that message. Oh. I, who am I going to get a hold of? Yeah. Right. He's in Michigan. So luckily his mother had went out to watch him, but she, I'm texting her. She can't find TJ. She had no clue, like, because oh. the track's so big. Like, nobody knew nothing. It, this one, I didn't hear what happened to him for an hour before he, he was already being rushed to the hospital. You know, he had collarbone was pretty much through his skin. Jesus. It was just, you know, they had to give, rush him in for emergency surgery mm -hmm. and all this stuff. And it's like, fuck, oh, man. It's just like shit like that's what really, really sucks about not being able to go to the races. Because yeah. you, just, you just don't know. And that was like, you know, that was really really cr bad crash and then like seeing what his bike looked like and just it was it could have been really really bad now he is that the worst of his injuries what's that's what's he broken be, he's broken i mean he's broken a lot of shit but that had to have been the worst because it's nothing he did wrong it was a mechanical his front sprocket actually sheared the thing it shot off the chain wrapped up in the sprocket as he was going up the lip of a jump so it sent him over the handlebars oh man yeah he, he was just over. Yeah, it was catapult. just game over. Yeah, yeah, he just catapulted thirty feet. <laughs> yeah, but he's done, you know, ACL. You yeah. know, he's got ACLs. You know, wrists, collarbones. Um, I mean, it's a crazy it's just part of sport. Yeah, yeah. It's, but what's crazy is it's it's even like with BMX. Like I've broken everything multiple times, and it's just like I don't know. It's Maybe it's because I'm older, but like nowadays, it's like, oh, you broke your wrist. All right, we'll be back in four weeks. Right. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. fine. I'll take that yeah, out. Like you guys are out for like three months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. His doctor. UFC his guys are like, well, oh, maybe six months. He'll be back. Well, you, yeah. we're actually hitting with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, like this, I just got to just hang on. Get tossed. Red. You know, I mean, if you fall, you're fucked. 
Yeah. Well, the big thing with us is just like the concussions, mm-hmm. right? Because they're kind of, you kind of get tossed and you whack your head. And so that's like, that's, I'm okay with the other shit, right? It's part of it. Like you break your wrist, you break your collarbone, you break your ankle. They'll heal. They'll heal. It's just, it's bones. It's part of it. It's like, that's no big deal. It's just the only thing that like that worries me is the, the concussion shit. Yeah. It's just... Yeah. With the I don't CT know. and shit yeah. and all that yeah. fucking... It, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know. When I was a kid, like, I feel like I've had a hundred concussions, right? Oh! Like, so last time I spoke to you, you were asking about maybe his weight or his strength. And I was like, man, one of the big things I've been told is creatine. And he was concerned about his son gaining weight on creatine. Because for every, what's it, every 10 pounds is one horsepower on a motorcycle? Oh, okay. No, I think it's, I could be wrong. I think it's like every two or three pounds is a horsepower on a motor. I can see and that. And TJ's bigger. So, yeah. So, so he races a 250 class and like the, for, I can only afford to do, give him a certain motor package, right? Right. So he has to be as light as we can make him. Now the problem is he's six foot. Mm, he's a big guy. Yeah. And you don't see that a lot in that, right? Yeah. And he's got it? really big quads yeah. and big ass from BMX racing. Right. 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 So right. 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 The rest of his body is like no no body fat at all. So he's so, just in shape. He's just bigger. That's a big dude yeah. to ride. Yeah. I said like a. Um, How much does he weigh? So he never felt like as he's gotten older. So he says if he would get below one seventy five. He just wouldn't feel strong. His body. He wouldn't feel strong, yeah. right? He would just feel weak and fatigued mm-hmm. and all that stuff. And it is physical, so, so you know he yes. has to be in real good shape to be moving that thing and everything. So that's like a double edged sword. Because what, what do those do? bikes weigh? Four hundred pounds? No, I don't think they're that. Two hundred. You got to think. You're doing outdoors. You're doing thirty minutes plus mm-hmm. two laps. Right. So you're basically doing thirty five minutes in the blistering heat. The track is gnarly as fuck. You know what I mean? And then Supercross, it's twenty. You know, it's whatever it is, 15 laps plus two. But the problem with Supercross, yeah, it, I mean, it's still gnarly and, and gets rough, but the intensity level is through the roof because it's right. a shorter race. And, and it's just, you know, there's, you got to take into consideration, you know, there's arm pump, there's this, there's that. And, you know, right. I mean, the amount of, the amount of lactic acid that builds up in your forearms sure. and then your, he like, actually, you have to have a death grip on that fucking thing. I mean, it's called riding on the edge where you just pretty much have the throttle fucking open the whole race. But the problem is if you're holding on to that, like dear life, you're getting arm pump. You get arm pump, done. You're done. Your arms are filled with concrete and it's game over. So he actually just recently, so he went back down to Florida for, you know, boot camp and everything for 2020 season, like the beginning of October. So he went down, he healed up from everything. He went down. Um, he was having some back issues still from that crash. So he ended up seeing a car like two different chiropractors. Oh, there's nothing wrong with you. Know, and then he went to another chiropractor. I told you physical therapy was probably the move, right? Yes. Yeah. But it's dude in King here. It's so hard. Like it's so hard to find somebody that understands what he does. Right. And nobody wants it. Nobody wants to. They're just jerk offs, right? Yeah. Like it's, they're just, they're, they are, they're just jerk offs around here. So then he goes to a chiropractor that we met mountain biking. The guy sees him. He had three ribs at a place still from that crash two bones in his wrist that were out of place. Like this kid's been walking around since July like this, puts all that, puts them back together, you know, popping, doing all this stuff. He feels like a million dollars. So he went down there and, you know, started training and all that stuff. And uh, he actually, I think for three, maybe a month, he went vegan. So he, he was trying stuff cause we needed to lose weight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was like, like I wanted them to try to get to 170 pounds. He was like, I don't know, dad. You know, I'm like, dude, it's like, you got it. Some, somehow we got to try to lose some weight in these fucking legs that you got. Yeah. And, you know, if there's one stuff. thing I could put on that is like after it would probably be fasted cardio. No, Rob. Sure. A lot of cardio. Like where yeah. just, I mean, keep his heart rate between 120, 130, where he's just, just moving for, I don't know, anywhere from 40 minutes to an hour, you know, and that, if he's running, that will trim down his legs, no? Sure, yeah. What is he? So, which is cool now these days. And, like, I was always into the skateboard culture, BMX, snowboard culture. None of these guys trained, like, they didn't have a strength conditioning coach. They didn't do all the stuff. Now you have to. There's, like, no way around it. Oh, um, yeah. You have to. You have to. All these guys are so good. They're taking to the next level. They're training, like, all other professional athletes. Um, 
what uh because i'm sure he's in the gym what is this guy what are these these guys doing in the gym for bmx are they doing high reps are they doing power are they doing cardio so, a lot what so do they have him doing he's back with his trainer that mm -hmm. he had two years ago that we okay. had so much success yeah. with. um you know obviously he, he, he cycles a shit ton yep he runs Makes a sense. shit ton yeah mountain bikes a mm -hmm. shit ton um but he rides like at the training facility he rides the actual dirt bike got it shit too yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? so it's it's obviously different days it's different things i right. don't really know his mm -hmm. his exact program because the trainer that we're back with i have so much faith in that program I don't, do it. Even, yeah. I don't even question it and so what's crazy is tj was struggling with some arm palm mm -hmm. that he never had and you know cramping and all this stuff and he's like dad i don't know he went tried this vegan thing it's all gone Felt good, huh? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, if it works, uh, that sounds great. I mean, if it's good and he's just maintaining weight, which you said you wanted to get him down a little bit, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, down a little yeah. Weight. Yeah, I would say um, the less of the uh, actual high rep weight training is a little detrimental for those guys because it builds up mm -hmm. a decent amount of muscle size, but you're looking for endurance and you're looking to yeah. lose weight, which is kind of crazy. You think about it, you know, it's you don't think about these guys having to make weight, you know, like wrestlers and, and, uh, this mixed martial art guys and all that, they always need to make weight and maintain weight. But I guess, yeah, you have to be on a certain, uh, a certain weight class to ride those, the, you know, your, what is 150 CC class or 250 yeah. class. On I there. could see that so, similar, little, yeah. similar to like a right. jockey. Yeah. Rides yeah, horses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. You exactly, need to maintain. Exactly what you just um, said, like about yeah. a jockey. Cause he's yeah. got like, these the guys diet. are yeah. 130. Some of them are a hundred between 130 yeah. and 160 pounds on 60 Smaller horsepower guys. motorcycles yeah. and it's like they ride them like like it's unbelievable that like they just it's just crazy like how are you're how are you so little but you're so and strong you can you can whip 30. that bike around like that yeah it's it's absolutely it's absolutely crazy and like tj said like he, he's trying this vegan thing he feels really really good i mean i listened to joe rogan and it kind of got <laughs> debunked and i kind of was giving it to him you know what i mean uh, so <laughs> I mean, it's all based on what works for them. You know, you can yeah, do yeah, vegan, yeah. you could eat meat, you Everybody's can do keto. Is different hey, man, too. It's, it's really hard to say what, what diet's good, what diet's not. If it's working for him and he's doing good and he's making progress, keep it, do it. I, I know so. when I was making weight for a fight, I would eat less meat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, he, I mean, he says, like, he's like, and he says, who knows if, how long I'll be on, but he says, As right now, I have never felt this clean and like, this free and this like just it just feels like a million dollars you know what i mean and uh and the arm pump's a huge thing like you yeah. get arm, you get arm pump you're, it's game over so if you're not getting arm pump at all because you're you know on whatever this vegan thing is you know what i mean i don't know much about it but just from you know some podcasts that i have listened to but it's like i mean i'm a meat guy i'm fucking i want meat like i want yeah. meat so you know what i mean like but yeah so it's it is what it is Oh yeah. <laughs> give um, us give us your best street fighting story. Give me a good Dean Bermudez story. Including Dean Bermudez. Oh fuck, man. How many would you say you and Dean have scrapped in together? We've gotten a couple, so like you know, there's just fuck I was trying to think, like I have a fucking so many of them I can think of that I wasn't you know, a few house party ones that he was in. So from the outside uh, like 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 what I've heard about i I've, I've never been around these fights, whatever. I just always did the right thing, you know? Dennis Tr always... Trouble trouble, trouble doesn't find you, you know? You, you gotta try trouble. and fall. Yeah, so Joey would be out looking at... No. Uh, He'd be pushing a guy but like no, I've pajamas. been, you know, yeah. <laughs> I've been told from people like, just, he would sleep people. Just one, wow. Mop. Whether they knew it was coming or not. <laughs> I, was, I mean, I was never somebody like, I didn't go out like... I would I'm never, fucking someone out tonight. I would never randomly disrespect somebody or et cetera, but right. I was never, you know, I would never, I mean, you're not disrespecting me. We're not going to, it's just not happening. Right. And like, and again, if you're with, I don't care what anybody says. Like if you have a problem with fucking Dennis and I'm there, I'm getting involved with it. Like I love my friends. Like we all grew up tight together. It's just, you have an issue with one of them. One of us, you have a problem with all of us. And that's just, that's just how we grew up. No matter if it's right or wrong and, Oh, you know, there were five of you. There was two. Like, it doesn't matter what the situation is. That's just what it was. And that's Yo, how we I all. Remember, Yo, Joey, do you remember the one time I had 
a problem. With, I was living in Pennsylvania. I had a problem with this dude in Baltimore. I called my brother Dean. I'm like, yo, this dude, it's going down. He's like, give me a sec. He called him, his boy Phil. We had like one other dude. Like, all right, tonight, <laughs> drive to Baltimore. <laughs> yeah. So like, they were going to come from them. New York. I was going to meet them in Pennsylvania, and we were going to go fuck this dude up. And whoever, it didn't matter if he had 30 people. We were like, the five of us are going to go fucking, it's going down. And the dude, I don't know. The dude ended up being like, nah. Or he stopped like answering my 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 text or whatever. I was like, you little pussy. Well, now there's another dude. We won't give we won't say his name or give him any recognition. But there's a guy from up by where you are, Joey, that wants to fight Dennis. Nice. Oh no, fuck that guy. He'll probably <laughs> fucking murder. Who was his name? I don't remember his name. Oh, fuck. But yeah, it's a Roth. It's a Mark Roth. Why would Mark Roth want to fight you? He's constantly. He, do you know he's. He like messages our no, fan Dean, page. Dean told me he got lumped up at a party one time, whatever, because he he just he runs his mouth. He's constantly messaging like the fan page, like, "Yo, let's have a fight at Canton's Field. I'm sure you'll get a lot of people come buy tickets, oh, and I'll fuck and I'll fuck you up." I'm like, "Dude, what are you? You shot? <laughs> He's trying to make a name for himself." Well, no, because he said something one time on like on a page, and I was like, "Yo, Dean, who the fuck is this?" And Dean was gonna go fuck him up, but Crystal talked him out of it. I was like, all right. That would be a pretty good show, though. Oh, it would be hilarious. Be a great man show. Hang on, this dude that's going to his head right now. I was like, if I see him, I'll probably fucking smack him. Yeah. Anyways. We, yeah, we had Dean when Dean was up here, and we showed Dean. Dean got a little riled up. Dean was like, I'll go fight this guy as soon as I get back to Well, no. Oh, Stan, you're supposed to. And then it turned into, yeah, I'm going to yeah. I'm gonna go to Sargeries and fight the guy at Canteen Field. <laughs> <laughs> like high school shit. Meet me at the field. That's yeah. how you should do it. Bro, but, like, the guy's an idiot. He wrote, like, yo, we're going to sell tickets for 50 bucks a pop. I bet we sell 10,000 tickets. Uh, no, there's not even 10,000 people in Socrates, is there? That's probably the population. So, but that would have been, been a good payday for you guys. It would have been. Yeah. Good. What, are you going to 50-50 with this guy? I don't know. The play, but as soon as we start selling tickets, I'm sure it's going to get shut down by the cops or fucking something. There's no way you could legitimately do that. Like, set up an event on Eventbrite. Street fight at Canteen's Field. See how far you get. I mean... Has it been done before? I don't know. You should try. No, th it, it would never yeah. happen. Too many, too much logistics in, uh, that would stand in the way of that happening. But would you do it if you could? Yo, I would fight the guy. Hang on, you know, what's, you know, you know what's really funny? I was like, I think I was like one zero pro, and I know like Dean and those boys, like they like, yeah, like they, they don't ask questions, like they'll fight anybody. I was I'm like, yo, Dean, we should have like a fight club at your house. And like I'll fight your friends, and like we'll fight for money. And Dean was like, "Are you fucking stupid? I'm not gonna fight you, you asshole. Like you actually like you're a pro fighter." I was like, "What? You guys actually think I'm a pro fighter? Yeah, you know, talking about I want I, one fight on this yeah, guy yeah. program. Well, no, because the thing is, I'm the younger guy. I'm right. like the little, you know. <laughs> what was that? What were you, what I didn't know I had the respect for these guys. <laughs> now they're like always oh, pro. Yeah. I know one guy who <laughs> kicked Dennis's ass, Dean Bermudez. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't or did or can thinks he can oh thinks he so he, he thinks he thinks if it's on the feet he's got a chance he's got a striker's chance I like it does Dean train no no not at all just still thinks yeah, he can yeah. he can he get trains, you. On, he trains on Wednesday nights when we go mountain bike there you go did he go uh, oh that's, that's tomorrow perfect. night you guys are going tomorrow night right no nah, I think it's over with so we did that that's... um we did uh last Wednesday night was like. Well, that, so those old timers, they go all winter long. That he oh, said. Man. How did Rude they do that? Snow. They got the fat tires. Yeah, so they got fat tire bikes that um that, and I guess they have snowmobiles that they like pack the trails down with. Okay. So they just wow. they do that. It's pretty so, cool. I, mean, I, I love it. I've been having a good time with it, but I'm I don't love it that much. So right. I'm not gonna go out there. But so I think last so last Wednesday we did our ride, and then afterwards they have every year I guess they do a big uh, Thanksgiving dinner thing so uh yes we did that and that's it oh you went to it yeah so we rode last did you Wednesday. irish goodbye it what's that did you irish goodbye it yes he's the king Just king of the irish goodbye he'll, yeah he'll come over he'll pregame with you go out with him and then you'll be like where'd he go it'll be like one one thirty like where the fuck joey go i like that just gone i gotta go home i got things to do you don't know where he went. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's take you so know if he's to okay. say goodbye you to everybody. He, yeah. there's, no there's an art to it. The no, Irish I, oh, he's amazing. It's hard to do. Yeah. At this point, no one gets mad anymore. Like, oh, it's, you know, he it's left. about that time. Makes sense. He went home. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where's Joe? I'm a, yeah, it's fuck. It's 11 o'clock past my bedtime. I gotta go by. <laughs> See you.
<laughs> what do you want to stick around and say goodbye to do everyone? you have the, do you have the one story do you have one story before we end of what an Irish goodbye fist no fight. Dean fist fight I can't remember I, I think he was at like this house party fight that one night that we were in but I can't remember exactly do you have a re- like do you have a good reason why a fight started who you know I mean I don't you don't know the names of who was there how many people never, were involved? D- probably uh, 90% of the fights we got into, I honestly don't even know what the fucking reason that we got into the fight was. Is this high school? <laughs> high school fights. Like mm-hmm. a Cafaldo or Decker or said something after high inappropriate to somebody? Nah, got well, pushed. That was, and then... that was all, I mean, with Derek and them, that was like all, half the, dude, half the, honestly, half the fights that I got into, I never even fucking started. It was just like, you know. That's so, was, Stan says the same that's thing. That's my friend. I don't get into any fights yeah. that I start. Yeah. yeah, it's like, fuck. How man, did this like, happen? Just, I'll yeah, finish yeah. them, though, if you get within arm's reach of me. That's it? Yeah, yeah, or you're turned around. Like, you're, you're at a party. You're talking to chicks and shit, and you turn around. Like, your whole entire crew is just fucking fist fighting behind <laughs> you. Like, yeah, then you got to do like, something. That's, yeah, uh, that's what happened that night that, that night that I got stabbed. That's what happened. Oh, that's it. That, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You said you don't have a story. story. That's an excellent story. That let's like let's bring that story. Was Dean there? If Dean wasn't there, it's okay. I want to hear the knife. No, story. I think Dean might. There you go. Me. All right. I think this is a great story. Yeah. So, house party? <laughs> nope. It was a it was a woods party. Okay. Uh, yeah, it is party in the woods. Party in the yeah, woods. It was a woods party. Like so, I was a, actually, a bonfire. A nice yeah, fire. Yeah, yeah. So a fight had broke out with like just everybody was was fighting, right? So because I, another town up. came, like Kingston came or some shit. It was, yeah. Or like Orianta, Anior, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, or like Woodstock. Anior or Woodstock, yeah. Oh, okay. So that had broken out. And like like Jeremy and like they were just mopping these dudes, right? So it was not even worth, like it was just like, oh, cool, they're talking. So I was talking to these chicks. And, <laughs> and My boys are good. They, so she's like, Joey, watch out. And so she like kind of like grabbed my shoulders and turned me, like, turned me around. And like I looked. So this dude like running at me, swinging his arms. So I like look behind me, like where the fuck is this guy going? Right, right? at you. So, so he, <laughs> he gets closer. So he's running towards me. I clap this dude so hard. So he, he folded, but when he folded, so he was running towards me. He folded and he fell forward. And on, he kind of hugged me, right? So he had a knife in his hand. Oh. So when he did that, that shit just went four inches down, you know, in my back. But I'll, I'll I, hug behind the back. Yeah. Holding so on. Kinda like. Like he like out cold. Up, he went this way. Yeah. yeah, he was out. So like I threw him on the ground and just started kicking him in the face. Yeah. And I didn't <laughs> even know. Starting to break. I didn't even face. know I was stabbed. Right. At all. Like, I had no clue because you know your adrenaline. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Right. And then um, my buddy Jeremy, I hear, yo, I got stabbed. And so I like look over and his leg is just gushing like 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 where his quad muscle goes Man. into like his knee. And I'm like. Yeah, yeah, dude, you got fucking yeah, you gotta go, you gotta go to the hospital. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then, like, so then the fight really broke out. Like, shit just got crazy. Like, All these guys got you guys are trying to kill us. Yeah, like their cars, were, their windows were getting busted out. It was so I went and tried to get the one dude out. Of, I grabbed the door handle, and I remember pulling the door handle and just getting squirted in the face. Like, what the fuck? And I wipe my face, and it's just nothing but blood. I'm like, like where's this from? Fuck? What's this from? And then, then I feel like my back's all warm. Mm. And then one of my buddies was like, "Yo, your fucking back is covered in blood." And he pulled my shirt away, and it, you know, I was, I got stabbed. Nice. So yeah, that, okay. was, that was a fucking cool night. What town was that? Those guys roll with knives, huh? Bunch yeah, of dudes I guess. in that town. Jesus yeah. Christ. Good old bonfire. Well, and well it probably. Well, I mean, up in Aniora, they're a little. They're like more in the mountains. Uh, you know, they're probably. They probably they have, have like knives like, on them all the no, time. Like they have uh, like pocket knives. Probably got it. Got it. See, stands keep them arm's length away. They can't stab you yeah. to keep them arm's length away, right? Stan? Bro, that shit happens here too. I've had many knife fights where people got stabbed and shit. I've never been. You stabbed. have not had a knife fight though. You have. I've fight. had an. I've been oh. involved in them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't get. Oh, stabbed. you brought the knife out too. I've punched a kid who had a knife got and it. was like coming. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've, I've been in those. Where knives. on that corner where Kusamana was at? Yeah, there have been knives on that, and so, then there've been knives at like we used to have fights on Halloween. Is this a whoa knife fights on Halloween? Is this we a Lindenhurst knife fights? Yep. Lindenhurst knife fight. See, Lindenhurst is kind of like what is what is it the Mount Mount what, where are you guys Mount Marion Mount Marion kids I, I get it we yeah. have parties you see Lindenhurst roll up and you're like oh yeah Rob, Rob's Rob's like a rich kid <laughs> he lived in like the whitest neighborhood on Long Island uh, no I just moved there yeah like West Islip is worried about Lindenhurst but I nobody else is worried over. about Lindenhurst they call it, they call oh. it White Islip yeah. they hear Long Island they got in trouble for it this was in the news recently. 
It's pretty what? ridiculous. Calling it White Islip? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, but uh, no, I grew up in North Babylon, then I moved to West Islip. Oh, so okay. North Babylon's okay. legit. Yeah, North yeah. Babylon can get a little. North, uh, there's some knives in North Bab. Yeah, North Babylon wasn't 100%. worried about Lindenhurst coming over. No, trip. not at all. Yeah. How, how far are you guys from like Shoreham? Uh, it's a trip. Yeah, we're like, I don't know, 40 minutes, right? I'd say 40 minutes. Because there's a track over there, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, I know some yeah, guys yeah. who do ride over there. Yeah, yeah. So we're yeah, I used to race nationals over there. Yeah, it's out east. It's closer to yeah. Montauk over there. But it's, uh... And out there, it can get real ghetto. I'll get some knife fights out there. There's Listen, definitely man, yeah. some some of the best BMX BMX riders in the northeast, maybe even the country, have came out of Long Island, man. Really? I didn't yeah. know that. I have so, one of my neighbors. His kids ride motocross and BMX too. I guess it's a big. Well, thing. I mean, if you think about it, Long Island has like a, a very high amount of money mm -hmm. to get the kids the best training. They I guess can you, get. yeah, yeah, yeah. And just, but these are actually they're just they were just always super talented and like skilled. Like their skill level was always like, and it wasn't just like, you know, it's always like it wasn't. Most areas like have a couple like really good ones like. It seemed like all of those dudes from the island were just so. Yeah, I guess that's it. Yeah. They were just so dirty. Their their skill level was just crazy. Probably only the good ones left here. What do you mean? Like if you couldn't like if you couldn't compete here, like why would you go anywhere else? Gotcha. A lot of them are still never even left there. They're just still yeah. yeah 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 like that you know and and they a lot of them that did make it that were like badass were like before my time that actually like made but that yeah man so much talent has came off that island makes sense. Yeah. well because we've never tackled bmx or motocross or yeah whatever. i was feeling crazy we didn't have a guest tonight really so i was just like man i've wanted to like talk to tj I've wanted to talk to you about tj and just like i don't know he's like a professional athlete he, no not like he is a professional athlete and just you know he trains like a professional athlete he lifts in the morning, he works, mm -hmm. he does cardio, he diets. All these extreme dudes do. And I just don't think, you know, guys, like what, what speeds are they hitting in, in the arena? 45? 60? I, I, you'd have to ask TJ. I don't really know the exact speeds that they're hitting there. What what but, heights are they hitting on these on these ramps? Oh, dude, 40 feet? It's, yeah, they're, like, they're, they're jumping like 75 foot long triples. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah, well, even like I was saying before Menace rudely interrupted is we yeah, can keep this you. conversation going all night because this is uncharted territory for us. So let's yeah. definitely do this again. Let's try to get your son on sometime. We could definitely do a three-way, figure that out. Yeah. But, yeah, we're, we're interested in hearing about it. Yeah, I'm I sure gotta, our I fans are as well. Yeah, I got to go home and go to sleep. I got to yeah, work yeah. in the morning. Right. Yeah, you gotta you gotta ring TJ up. He's been he's actually been texting me. It was all when I texted him, he was kind of, he was all excited. I was like, oh. yeah, we'll we'll get him on. Uh, oh, so what? Were we supposed to call him the whole time? I don't know. Dennis texted me that. Well, I wanted to do a three way, but he said he was in like a faulty. It, oh, he's doing. We would have had to yeah, call yeah, yeah. him. Yeah. So we yeah, couldn't have right. we couldn't FaceTime him and call his son at the same time. You haven't figured that out. We yet. would have had to do no, a we, three way Skype. We could have oh. possibly. I but, thought you guys but, would be up to that level. Nah, we, I can figure okay. that out. Yeah. I'm or fuck it. We'll try it next week. I don't give a shit. Yeah, we'll go for next week because then we'll keep TJ on the phone for an hour, just like we kept yeah. Joey on the phone for an hour. But yeah, just, yeah, we, gonna... we appreciate the time, great stories, and uh, the insight into BMX. Yeah, no problem. And we'll have to do this again. Maybe we can get an in studio or we'll, we'll bring our setup up to Socrates and we'll have you and Dean on. Yeah, that'll be good. Wow. Actually got... And we'll get Dean and Dennis to fight. And settle yeah. this. Once Dean, Dean's, Dean's, got a, Dean's got a pretty good man, badass man cave now, too. You can oh, that. no. Stan's been there. No, I haven't been there yet. Yes, you did. Above his fucking house. I didn't go to Dean's man cave yet. Above he, his garage. I didn't go there. It's more of a Didn't you go cave. to his house? No. Remember when we went up there, he was away. And oh, then they came back. that fucking asshole. Yeah, me and Stan went up there for a weekend. We brought the boys and fucking Dean went to Albany like a loser. Yeah, he's a loser. Yeah. Uh, had we had we found some hypothetical talent, we might have broke into Dean's house, but we didn't get there. We didn't get there. Ah, uh, fuck. Next uh, time. Next time. It would have been worth it. He's got a good pool table. You could have, you know. Uh, pool table. And I would have been like, this is my pool table. This is my, yeah. my place. Yeah. Why'd you break yeah. in? Ah, I couldn't find yeah. the keys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't find the keys. Ah, uh, shake it bake. All right, Jay. We'll catch you for later, brother. All right, brother. I'll talk to you. Take Peace. Take it easy. Later. So menace the man going, switching it up. Yeah, getting a little BMX. I like the extreme little, stuff. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm into that. It's yeah. kind of cool to see the inside and tell. Because he set me up. We even though like I don't, you know, 
Well, that's I, like one of those things me and Menace always talk about is getting into other avenues. Like we want to start just having girls on, talking to them. Girls Obviously, on. extreme sports athletes. <laughs> we want to get into some actors, comedians, and whatnot. Just like we have open, tonight. Open. A strength coach, Rob yeah. Labiento. You're not just an MMA strength coach. You're no. a strength coach of soccer players. Yeah, I don't have any BMX guys I'd like to. You really you work cool. with Jillian, yeah. right? Yeah, Jillian. Jillian yeah. just won this weekend. Did, Jillian DeCorsa just won an Invicta. Yeah. Are you still working with that soccer player? Which one? He's uh, in, like, Florida now. Yeah, no? he's on. The, he's on. I'm trying to think of what team he's on, though. Uh, whatever the pro. I'm not a big, sorry, or soccer fan. Or like no, that? he's well, in Florida. Okay. I think. So if you guys are looking to get in shape, uh, Stan the Man might jump in one day. We always joke and say I might show up, but yeah, it's never gonna happen. Yeah, He's like, one time you came on, now I'm, I feel better. It's probably like been like a year. No, no, not a year. It's been like probably six months. For yeah, what? he came in this since studio, so we've been in. here since May. Who me? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I Remember one know. day I like showed up at the gym and Rob thought I was there to work out. Yeah, because no. it was like it was like yeah. a couple days after he came on the show. Yeah, you were like you're oh, here, and I was there yeah. to like meet Dennis yeah, for something. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, nope, sorry, bro, yeah, just awesome. here to just here to hang out. But one day, so Rob, let people know how they can find you. Uh, yeah, you guys can find us uh the gym on Long Island Street, the Performance dot com. Uh, we're doing some nice uh, Black Friday deals, so come on in. Uh, any sport you want, though, besides just uh. Athletics, we do some general We're training. Just like Love fucking it. body hurts, yeah, your in. back hurts. Get in here, start working out with us. We'll fix it. Yeah, some of the local town stops down, like Dennis. Yep. Um, it's really good. We have a good gym. It's opened up. Everyone's welcome. Uh, Li Strength on Instagram. You guys can check us out and uh, make some appearances on the Man Show here. Woo! Yeah. yeah. Right. So Dennis so, Bermudez Day, December thirteenth. Yep. Yeah. Word on the street is Rich Schaefer's going to be making an appearance. Well, so. no, Rob hit me up. He's like, yo, some kids in the gym were talking about Dennis uh, Bermuda's I heard it. Were yeah. they really? Yeah. yeah. I didn't bring it up. People, people, not kids. Adults. Full-grown adults were talking about <laughs> well, International Dennis Bermuda's Day. They were younger than us. No, no, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so. They knew. Cool. In my head, if, if someone's younger than you, you call them a kid, right? Yeah, yes, sure. 100%. Um, Why? Who was talking about it, Rob? No, we don't need to talk about names. Why not? Easy. I just like I wasn't gonna name drop the one dude. You were like Mark Roth. I'm coming no for you. No, fuck him. I don't know. I don't Actually, know. I don't really remember, but it was it was some people. There was a lot of uh, vested interest in in coming out to. The well, movie. Dennis Bermuda's Day, December thirteenth. Rob will be there. Friday. Rob's the 13th. bringing the baby out. Yeah. It's gonna be Friday the thirteenth. Shit's gonna be crazy. We haven't finalized the list, but it's a definite thing. December thirteenth. Just keep a lookout for Dennis to post some things in the next day or two. And uh, yeah, once we finalize that list, it's a go. Yeah. So, anything else you want to say, Dennis? Well, see you later. Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. Hanging out, drinking some G Fuel.